season could fall tonight. Marino needs four to tie, five to break, the standard of 36, held jointly by Y.A. Tittle and George Blanda. Mark Duper has seven touchdown passes. Mark Clayton has a league-leading 11. And tonight, Marino will face the New York Jets and Mark Gastineau, the premier pass rusher in the game today. At 6'5", at 265 pounds, Gastineau leaves the NFL in quarterback sacks. And tonight, he'll be focusing his enormous talent on the young Dolphin quarterback. Playoff hopes for the injury rack Jets are slim. But if running back Freeman McNeil plays up to form tonight, those hopes could remain alive. And McNeil is also looking for a personal record. He needs less than 100 yards to surpass the Jets' rushing record for a single season set by John Riggins back in 1975. He could get it tonight. We're live from Miami. It's the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. Tim hopes alive for a possible playoff spot. Meanwhile, the Miami Dolphins have clinched the Eastern Division of the AFC. And after Denver's loss yesterday to Seattle, they are in control of their own destiny. A win tonight and a win in the final three games. They will be in charge of home field throughout the AFC playoffs. A wind is blowing in from the open part of the stadium. The Jets have won the toss. They will be receiving and dropping back is Davlin Mullen along with Kirk Springs, number 21. The Jets' first offensive series will go against a brisk wind that is blowing here this evening. Move of on Shaman to kick things off, to get things underway. The 11-1 Miami Dolphins looking to make it 12-1 tonight. And you caught a little bit of that wind as Von Charman put it right out of the end zone. Frank Gifford along with Don Meredith and O.J. Simpson this evening. And the Jets racked with injuries, particularly in their secondary. They're going to have a hard time getting troops out there tonight to face the number one passing team in the NFL, the number one offense. And believe me, these Jets have really been pounded in their secondary. They met the Dolphins three weeks ago. They lost three cornerbacks in that game. Set to go. Ken O'Brien is the quarterback, the first-year man out of the University of California, Davis. Came up number one draft pick a year ago. Unable to go tonight is Pat Ryan because of bruised wow. ribs. And quickly, Freeman McNeil, who is also injured, is hammered by Doug Betters, the defensive left end. Let's take a look at the rest of that offensive unit for the Jets. Their offensive line has stayed pretty much intact, and they'll be trying to protect this man, Ken O'Brien, who had a lot of trouble last week against Houston. Houston coming with a lot of blitzes against the Jets and Ken O'Brien. They really had him disturbed somewhat. We have injuries also to the Jets at the outside receiver position. Wesley Walker unable to go tonight. Lamb Jones playing with a very sore hamstring. Also, he has had a slight case of flu. There was a loss of three betters against McNeil. It'll be second down 13. Green McNeil, left side, once again, out of at the 20 to about the 21, where it will bring up third down and nine. Defensively, the Dolphins, of course, like all teams, will move out of their 3-4 basic defense and situational defense, but they have great linebacking. Brzezinski on the right side. They, too, however, have been hurt because Ernie Roan, the leading tackler on the inside, is not able to go tonight because of a pinched nerve in the neck. So Mark Brown is in there, a second-year man out of Purdue. Third down and nine, and Ken O'Brien finds himself in his first passing situation. In the first game, in which Miami won three weeks ago, Freeman McNeil had himself quite a day. But he is playing with sore ribs. O'Brien finds the man wide open. It's Lamb Jones, and Jones will have first down yardage out of the 30-yard line. Again, keep in mind, Lamb Jones playing with a very sore leg. Wesley Walker unable to go. Bobby Humphrey is also injured, so the two healthy receivers have not caught an NFL pass. That's Bruckner and Kai Davidson. As well, Bill Judson is the guy at number 49 that's on Lamb over here. Lamb makes a pretty good move to the inside. Boy, he's got the quickness, hasn't he? He's the guy that they expected so much of. He's had so such a hard time staying healthy. Well, he did a good job at the end of last season. He was really coming on strong. They was looking for big things out of him this year, but unfortunately, he got hurt early in the season. First down and 10, Cedric Minter, number 25. The single setback for the Jets. He'll try it over the right side, and he'll get a couple of yards moving out to the 35. Minter just came off the injured reserve for the Jets this week. He has had his problems, but he's a fairly good runner out of the backfield and a better receiver. And Joe Walton, of course, an old teammate of mine with the Giants, started out with Washington as an offensive coach. Two years as offensive coach of the Jets before he took over as head coach a year ago. Has molded his team to his own liking. Traded away Richard Todd, his number one quarterback to New Orleans. A 
this past season. Freeman McNeil back in on second down and seven. Ball just short of the 35. This will be McNeil. Oh. McNeil taken down from behind, and it is Cam Camper coming in from the right side. And McNeil just short of the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard, and we're going to have a third down and eight. You got a feeling we're going to hear from Cam an awful lot tonight. Bo Camper, number 58. He plays that nose guard, nose tackle, or whatever you want to call that thing, really well, very quick. Now, he's quick, but you can run at him. That's the. The book on these golf and defensive ends, both campers and betters, is that you can run at them. And if the Jets are going to have any chance to win here tonight, they're going to have to eat up the clock by controlling the ball on the ground and keeping that Miami high-powered offense off the football field. Third and eight, dual setbacks. O'Brien has the time, throws into a crowd, and he connects with Lamb Jones. And Jones has the first down, out close to the 44-yard line. So Lamb Jones now on the receiving end of the two successful O'Brien passes, and... One would suspect, and probably so, that Jones will be the outside receiver that gets to work as we watch him here. Well, they say Lamb is hurting, but he's really doing a good job of shaking the man who's trying to bump him coming off the line of scrimmage. He ran a turn in, caught the ball, kept his feet, which is something that a lot of uh, receivers will not do for you. So he must not be hurting that bad. Lamb Jones now with two first down receptions. The Jets fighting a brisk breeze and move to their own 44-yard line. First down and 10. Bobby Humphrey, number 84, top of your screen, the wide receiver. And O'Brien will drop again. The flag is down as O'Brien gets a sailor uh -huh. off that stiff win. Also, his man well covered, Bobby Humphrey. Our referee tonight is Fred Wyant. And we have our first flag of the night. Miami, once again this season, the least penalized team in the NFL. And that is an amazing stat to me. I was reading that today, and it's hard to believe. They've only had 50 penalties up until this year. And if they go through the season and do that again, it be the ninth year in a row that this man's team is the least penalized team in the National Football League. That's got to tell you something right there. Discipline, they're well. They execute very well. He, Don Shula, to me, Frank, is like the consummate coach. He, he, you think about winning when you look at him, and he's done it for so many years, 22 years in the league and 15 here in Miami. And he does it with these teams. He always gets these no-name defenses. You have a hard time identifying a lot of their stars. Jets have already run off four and a half minutes on the clock. Second down and 10. O'Brien looking deep, trying to get upfield to Nick Bruckner, and no success there. William Judson back there defensively. Well, they were trying to take advantage of Judson playing man-to-man -man and not reading the quarterback. He had his back to Ken O'Brien, and they tried to hang it up. Normally, you'll see that play on the goal line, but unfortunately, with this win, he couldn't throw the proper pass. The situational changes now by both teams. Two tight ends are in for the Jets. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to try and block with them because their rookie from Miami, Glenn Dennison, is a good receiver, and we will suspect they're going to start looking to Mickey Schuler or Dennison at tight end. O'Brien. Oh, got him. Oh. Schuler. And he was ever so open. He really was. The Dolphins, as you mentioned, Frank, have not been too good against the rush this year, but there's a reason for that. They've been so far ahead from everybody that they, they, most teams have been passing on them. But another interesting statistic is they've only had two passes all year long that have been, for, been completed for more than 40 yards. If that would have been completed, that would have been more than 40. That's Chuck Ramsey kicking into the breeze that got that ball sailing off Ken O'Brien's arm and over the outstretched fingertips of Mickey Schuler. That would have been a jet first down. Now it's going to be Miami's first possession. That was a 33-yard effort by Ramsey fighting that stiff win. And here is the youngster, Dan Marino, who is exciting the entire world of football. Give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Uh, give me a light. Uh, Bud Light. Hold this, will you? So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light! Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Strike. Nissan 85, long bids, king cabs, 4x4s, sport trucks, all major values starting at a $59.99 sticker, same as last year. All re-engineered with a new smooth side strong box. Nissan 85, built tough enough to be major motion. Right now, special incentives from Nissan can help save you big money at your Datsun dealer, but hurry. Offer limited. 
With the strong right arm of this youngster, Dan Marino, now in his second year out of Pittsburgh, the Miami Dolphins are averaging over 300 yards a game passing. He does it ever so well. He has the quick release that you hear so much about. He genuinely has one. He has that ball up there, cocked and ready to release at any time. First down and 10, Miami's first possession at their own 23-yard line. Tony Nathan is the single setback, and they'll try him over the left side. Versatile Tony Nathan, good receiver, fine runner. He'll pick up a quick five yards to bring up second down and five. And let's take a look at the rest of that offensive unit. They'll terrorize you on the outside with Mark Clayton, number 83. He's got 11 touchdowns into the night and averaging over 18 yards of reception. Duper leading the league in average per catch over 19 yards. He has seven touchdowns. And between the three tight ends, Hardy, Johnson, and Rose, they have completed 53 passes there. And they're working against the decimated Jets defensive secondary. Second down and five. Ball at the 28-yard line. Nathan, right side, big opening, and Nathan left first down yardage out over the 35, close to the 36. And let's take a look at that defensive unit. Up front, of course, perhaps the most celebrated defensive lineman of the game today is Mark Gastineau. 18 and a half sacks into the night. The linebackers open the left side. Greg Buttle is out with a shoulder injury. Rusty Gilbo is in there replacing him. The secondary, well, three out of the four. It's questionable how long they can go, and they're playing all out of position. They lost three cornerbacks three weeks ago against Miami. They're trying to go tonight. We'll talk more about that later. Marino snaps one off, gets it out to the tight end, Bruce Hardy. Nice run. And Kurt Springs over there that time. He had him man for man. You saw Hardy come out of the from his tight end position. Not much gain. Good play by Kurt Springs. Marino has such a good arm that when he throws the ball, it's almost as if he's pumping. You know, and it's his delivery from his pump and, and his release are just about the same. So I think these defensive backs can't get a read on when he's really throwing the football. And a loss to San Diego a week ago. He set a Miami record. He completed 28 passes a week ago. He's closing in on Dan Fouts' all-time season record of over 5,000 yards. And on second and nine, Joe Carter, the rookie from Alabama, who has performed well for the Dolphins this year. He'll get about a yard out of it to bring up third and seven, but Carter has been pressed into service by the loss of Andre Franklin, the leading rusher from a year ago. They lost him early in the season, and of course, tragically, the loss of David Overstreet in an automobile accident last June. So it has been Tony Nathan taking up the slack, along with Joe Carter, the rookie from Alabama. Third down and seven. From the shotgun. Two men on Gastineau. Marino holds it as long as he can and finally delivers it and gets it to Clayton. But it's a rather Nat Moore incomplete. Well, Nat picked up double coverage on that play. He had beaten his man at the line of scrimmage, and unfortunately, the safety came up, and even though he was open, made the play. We're going to have some fun now. We're going to watch the great kicker, Reggie Roby, on fourth down. As the fewest punch in the NFL. There he is, second-year man out of Iowa. And he can really boom it when he gets the opportunity to kick away. But the offense of Miami is so good, he just doesn't have that many opportunities. 33 punts. They've got 33 touchdown passes. 32 by Marino. Oh. And no. dropping back, dangerous return man for the Jets, Kirk Springs. He can go all of the way. We saw him beat New Orleans for the 76-yard punt return a year ago. Big high drop. Hangs it up so high. Springs watches it off the foot calls for the fair catch before that ball had even reached the peak of its arc for the jets we'll get the football back they'll be close to their 22 yard line their second possession when we come back picture a computer so good it can easily run over a thousand of the best programs written for the ibm pc so good it can also run powerful new cartridge programs like lotus one two three or a program that lets you paint pictures in living, sparkling color. So far, so good? Now picture this. Without monitor, it costs less than $1,000. And it comes from IBM. PC Junior, the computer that's growing by leaps and bounds. Last year, Sears tuned up one million engines performed more than a million brake repairs, installed over three million shocks, sold upwards of nine million tires, and replaced more batteries than anyone else in America. At Sears, we install confidence. And best of all, we do it right next door to all this.
exciting CFA doubleheader. First at 12 Eastern, number 11 Auburn guns for a Sugar Bowl berth against Alabama. Then third-ranked Florida tackles number 12 Florida State Saturday on ABC. The Orange Bowl is fired up tonight, giving us the South Florida version of the wave, if you will. But they have had so much to be fired up over this season. A Miami Dolphins at 11 and 1 have clinched the AFC Eastern Division. They're playing the Jets tonight, and they know that if they can win tonight, they can beat the Raiders next week. They can beat Indianapolis and Dallas. The game will bring you the final Monday of the season. They will be in total control of the playoff situation. They'll play all the games right here in the Orange Bowl in Miami. That's the time remaining in the first quarter. On first down, Freeman McNeil over the left side. And McNeil, good hard running. He had 132 yards in the first meeting of these teams three weeks ago. Gain of five, it'll be second and five. We're going to be moving out of Miami to head up to Minnesota to bring you a Thursday night game between the rejuvenated, and I guess that's the best way to put it, Washington Redskins against the Minnesota Vikings and that NFC East. Well, they all know they have to keep winning. It is really tied up in knots. And Washington has got Charlie Brown back. They have the great Art Munt who is leading the league in receptions. So they are once again the explosive Washington Redskins. Second and five, McNeil. Nailed at the 30-yard line, short of the first down by a couple. It'll bring up third down and two. Uh, I read in the papers, A. Theismann is, is, you know, he's talking a little bit more now, and he uh -huh. says he's got his missiles back, but the diesel's hurting a little bit. Riggins has still got a little bit of back trouble. He did score a touchdown yesterday, but... They're saving him a little bit, so they're going to the air with their young missiles. That's going to be a good ball game. Then we got the Bears out in San Diego next Monday. I'm looking forward to that game, too. Third down, long two. Capacity crowd, 75,000-plus. Chanting defense. That's a reverse to Glenn Dennison, the tight end, the rookie out of Miami. Uh -huh. that they're so high on with the Jets. And it was Charles Bowser that came out there. Charles says, you're not getting around me, baby. I'm going after you. That's a good move by your linebacker. Well, look at that guy move. There's a young man that came up in the second round, but he had a great year with Miami, the national champions, a year ago with 54 receptions, and he is just starting to blossom here yeah. for the Jets. He did. Charles Bowser did a super job on this because this play is designed to get a lot of yards, not just the first down, and I'm sure they ran it. To, they were gambling a little bit trying to get a big play out of it. It's only the second reverse that the Jets have run this year. They don't like to come with those plays, but they're going to have to come with everything tonight. Nicky uh, Schuller, first down up close to midfield. Nicky Schuller having a superb year for the Jets, even though they have struggled and have lost their last four games. He is 43 receptions now on the season. Long way from the end of this ball game, but you got to think the Jets feel pretty good right now because they've we talked about they've been hurting so much. They're going into a very strong win, and he's throwing that ball pretty well. And they're keeping the ball, and that's the key to this uh, game for the Jets. If they they got to eat up that clock. Time of possession means something in this game. Just short of midfield, first and ten for the Jets. They've been able to tick the seconds off. We're inside six minutes remaining in the first quarter. They got an offside on Miami, looks like. Tony Page, the rookie from Virginia Tech, up to midfield for a gain of about a yard, and there was movement in the line and indicated offsides against the Dolphins. So that'll be a five-yard pickup. Capacity crowd, 75,000, blacked out of the Miami area, was not sold out. Was not sold out prior to the 72-hour deadline, and the fans have turned out. They have seen so much great football over the years. You hark back to the four times the Dolphins have gone to the Super Bowl, 72, the undefeated 17-0 season. The span of 1972 and 73 Francis. when they were 32 and 2. They're all princesses. First down and five. Ball they to the 35-yard line of the Dolphins. O'Brien. Batted away, intended uh, for Freeman McNeil, and somebody got a paw on it. No surprise there, Don. I thought with first and five that they would run the ball. I did, too, as a matter of fact. Ken O'Brien is kind of an unknown uh, quantity in a way, you know? Ken came in as the number one draft choice, and I remember old draft day that Jet fans were saying, who in the world is Ken O'Brien? That's, oh, that's, that's old big 75. Doug Betters has got his hand up. But, of course, Marino was not drafted, so they got Ken O'Brien. He's, they still don't know how good he is. Second down and five. 
Handoff is to McNeil. He's held for a gain of about a yard. We'll bring up a third down and four. And the interesting story when you watch these two quarterbacks tonight, Ken O'Brien was a number one draft pick a year ago for the Jets. He was taken in the 24th round of the first round of picks. And oddly enough, Dan Marino was taken 27th. It's been a fascinating story. Ken O'Brien <laughs> did not play hardly at all a year ago. Saw very little duty. Did not throw a pass the first seven games of this season. And then when Pat Ryan went down with a pair of concussions and rib cartilage injury, he was pressed into a starting role a week ago, a loss to Houston, and he is starting and operating tonight for the Jets. Third and four. O'Brien, Schuler complete, first down Jets, and he breaks the tackle to the 32-yard line. Glenn Blackwood makes the stop, and the Jets working against the breeze, and a very strong one, are moving the football successfully. Just a little bit more on O'Brien. When he came, you know, when he came in, he's had some trouble, as we said, starting. But that time, that was a good, solid set. He sat in there and threw that ball very confidently. But a lot of people in the Jet organization said that he probably wouldn't have had that job anyway, that Pat Ryan had actually outplayed him in preseason, had his troubles with his Club 54 situation. And so it's going to be interesting to see how he comes out of it. I think he's got the talent. First down and 10. The Jets moving at the 32-yard line of the Dolphins. Freeman McNeil, single setback. Schuler in motion. McNeil inside the 30. He'll get about four out of that. Well, it's uh, no surprise that the Jets are running the ball successfully. They're the number one rushing team in the AFC. They have one of the great offensive line coaches in football. He was one of the great offensive linemen, Jim Ringo. He was my old coach up in Buffalo when I had my better years up there. And that's the one bright spot for this Jet team as far as running the football is concerned because that's the only place that they've had no injuries that's this it. year. That's, what, that's exactly right. No injuries in that offensive line. They mark it near the 28, so we'll call it second down and seven. That's the time remaining in the first quarter, and we have no score from the Orange Bowl in Miami, the Jets and the Dolphins. Play action by O'Brien. McNeil. Wide open. Wide open is McNeil. Oh, yeah. He Beautiful play. the middle of the line on play action. Nobody picked him up. He was wide open, and the Jets are on the scoreboard first on a 28 toss. It was O'Brien to McNeil. Could have what been. a difference Touchdown. McNeil means to the Jets offense. He does so much. Could have been. We've got a new linebacker in there, Mark Brown. You see 51. He's the closest one to it. It's hard to say up here whether he missed an assignment or not, but somebody did. Well, that's a good guess because Mark Brown led this team in, in tackling the first three games of the season, but they benched him because they said he didn't play the pass well, so that could have been his man. McNeil's first touchdown catch of the year. Leahy on for the conversion. Pat Ryan, the injured quarterback we talked about, is the holder. But he gets it through the uprights, and there is a bit of a stunned sort of quiet that has settled over the Orange Bowl as the Jets have moved the ball well. The 2.52 remaining in the first quarter, they lead 7 to nothing. Nissan 300ZX Turbo. You know the car. But do you know what it's like to drive it? Now you know. Once you get inside a Z, a Z will get inside of you. Come alive, come and drive. Major motion from Nissan. It's your Datsun dealer. So, you got your Christmas bonus. Ho, ho, ho. Underwhelmed? A man is giving a Christmas bonus that won't disappoint you. A U.S. savings bond worth 50 to 75 to $100 just for buying an Amana. So come on into your participating Amana retailer and get your holiday cheer with the Amana Christmas Bonus. No one was tough enough until Clint Eastwood escaped from Alcatraz Sunday. How well we remember Fulton Walker from Super Bowl 17 when he set a Super Bowl record for kickoff returns. One of them a 98-yard return in that loss against the Redskins. He missed four games early in the year, but we know that he can travel the distance. Leahy puts it in the air against a stiff breeze, and Walker will field it at the three-yard line. Almost. And a good return. He could have popped it big, but he does get out close to the 28-yard line. Where Miami, frustrated with their first possession of the night, will have another opportunity when we come back to the Orange Bowl. Yeah, yeah. This 
retreat into the power line. Introducing Moore Truck for 85, the 59.99 Nissan. More payload than any other leading standard compact truck. More combined standard power and torque, too, all for the same sticker as last year. The 59.99 Nissan. Power's off. Let's go. The Moore Truck for no more money. Right now, special incentives from Nissan can help save you big money at your Datsun dealer. But hurry, offer limited. In this uncertain and bewildering world of personal computers, the Tandy 2000 stands apart. In power, speed, and graphics, the Tandy 2000 is clearly superior. For service, support, and software, Tandy is clearly superior. Available exclusively at Radio Shack Computer Centers. Compare. You, too, will immediately recognize Tandy technology, service, and support are clearly superior. The Jets have won their last four Monday night football games. That's the longest current Monday night winning streak by any NFL team. It's not a bad record on Monday night. They also lost the first seven times they played on Monday night football. Let's take a look at the scoring drive capped off by the 28-yard touchdown pass, O'Brien to McNeil. There it is. Mixed it up a little bit. They had one pass when OJ and I thought they were going to run on that first and five in there. They had one little penalty thrown in. Just out over the 28 yard line, the Miami Dolphins in possession with their electrifying offense. And so far, with their first possession, they were unable to get it ungeared. Oh, uh, yeah. Over the middle, and it goes to the tight end. That's Dan Johnson. And Johnson is out to the 45 yard line. They'll mark it nearer the 44. First down and 10 Miami. Frank, what you said about Marino earlier is his ability to carry the ball high. And when he gets the ball, the snap from center, it immediately comes right up to that throwing position. I don't think anybody could deliver the ball any quicker than, than he did that time. That's just that quick recognition of the defense. There's his receiver, and zip, there it is. It's almost an impossible pass to stop unless you have a defensive end or linebacker bump that tight end at the line of scrimmage. That's absolutely right. First down and 10. The ball near the 44 yard line. Marino again rips one and he gets this to the tight end Bruce Hardy. Ball is loose. There's a scramble. Jets. The whistle has blown. And even though the Jets were in possession of it, Rusty Gilbo no. came away with it. I don't know. And they are going to bring it back and it's going to be uh -huh. first down Miami. Very popular with the crowd here. The whistle apparently had blown. And that was a tough one because we had two officials pulling the other way. But the referee's right on it. And he's the head man. Red, white. Go walk exercise somewhat. Interesting stories that always develop in football. When Joe Walton came up to the Washington Redskins, they put him on defense. Also playing defense for the Redskins that year, Don Shula. Teammates with the Redskins. And now adversaries. The first down is at the 41-yard line of the Jets. It'll reverse action. It goes to Joe Carter, the rookie from Alabama. Gets outside and rambles down inside the 25-yard line. Quick breaking play, set up beautifully. The play inside, pulling the linebackers in, and Carter got to the outside. It's a situation where they've obviously looked at a lot of film. If you'll see, they're going to catch Gaston on an inside move. And Mark is such a great pass rusher, he'll go anywhere they want to. The tackle tried to influence him to go inside. He did. They got outside of him, and that helps his 5.5 rushing average, doesn't it? Joe Carter out of Alabama. Well, he was too shy of being counted in the standings, the league standings, but once he is, he'll have the best rushing average in the AFC. The first down inside the 25-yard line, and Woody Bennett stays on his feet, and Bennett down close to another first down. He'll have it near the 12-yard line in the arms of Davlin Mullen, but that's just good hard running. Spinning after he was hit, and Woody Bennett, who has taken up a lot of that slack with the loss of Andre Franklin. Gets the first down for Miami. Well, it's really good running, as you can see. They're picking on the center of this Jet defense. So you can, boy, it's good at leg action. You got to tackle a man like Woody Bennett low. But what they're doing is picking on Kyle Clifton, number 59. He's a rookie. He's playing middle linebacker. That's a lot of territory to cover in a 4-3 defense. He's the only guy in there. There Bennett, he is again. Another opening this time. Hammered, however. Kyle was there that time. Rusty Gilbo defensively. As Bennett gets to the two-yard line, a gain of a couple. It was Gilbo 
and Mel, who made the stop, the two linebackers on the outside for the Jets. Final seconds ticking off here in the first quarter. You don't think the Jets are going to be too terribly unhappy about getting that win in their favor. And time will run out of the first quarter. And the Dolphins will have a second down and eight. They'll be at the 10-yard line when we come back to the Orange Bowl. At operations, Hawaiian Islands. Most jobs promise you the world. The Navy delivers. See your recruiter or call this number. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. Give me a light. A Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. And I'll have a light. <laughs> a Bud Light! <laughs> so if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Uh, give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Now. There's a gasoline that will help get top performance out of your car. Now, there's a gasoline that will eliminate knocking and pinging in virtually every car. Now, there's a gasoline with the highest octane available anywhere. 93.5 Ultra. You can't buy it from Emico, Exxon, or Mobil. It's only available from Sunoco. 93.5 Ultra. The ultimate in octane. dominated early in the uh, first quarter able to move the ball well upfield they lead seven to nothing but Miami has come roaring back and second down and eight as we begin the second quarter the ball at the 10 yard line Woody Bennett single setback out to the right is the dangerous Mark Cooper that's Mark Clayton up at the top of your screen the two young wide receivers Marino looks in the corner of the end zone Bruce uh, Hardy can't hold on well the ball was there the one pass I mean uh, he can't throw a ball any better than that. Well, they're congratulating old Rusty for being back there, but Rusty didn't have much to do with that and had he been able to hold on. In good ball game now comes the best receiving tight end for Miami. That's Joe Rose. He was activated off the injury reserve a week ago. Did not see much action in San Diego, but he is dangerous down around the goal line. And we have a third down and eight situation. Joe Rose, number 80. And out to the top of your screen this time goes Mark Duper. Mark Clayton is split right. Now he's in the slot up at the top of your screen, number 83. Look for Matt Moore around this time. Uh-oh. Gastineau appeared to be offside. Yeah. Marino in the corner of the end zone trying to get it to Matt Moore. Incomplete. But again, a flag is down. And Gastineau looked as though he snapped off of the line of scrimmage a little early. More than just the five yards. They're giving Marino another chance to throw. Well, one of the reasons I tell you to look for Nat Moore is this has been a godsend for Nat Moore to have these two Mark Duper and Mark Clayton playing on the outside because he'll come in on third down and play the third, be the third receiver. And normally he's going to get a safety or a linebacker trying to cover him. And it's been a new life for Nat Moore here. He's working against the third best defensive back on the defense. He had in there time of possession. The Jets were able to control the ball throughout much of the first quarter. They lead seven to nothing. We have a third down and three, and the ball is marked right at the five-yard line. Now we have the four wide receivers go in. The tight ends are out. Mark Clayton, 83. Mark Duper, 85. Matt Moore, 89. OJ just talked to him. And Jimmy Cephalo with the good moves, number 81. Four wide receivers. The Dolphins will come from the shotgun. Okay. Watch the bottom of your screen, number 99, Gastineau. Oh, there. Double coverage. Stevenson coming out, and nevertheless, they get the time, get the ball to Clayton. That's his 12th touchdown reception. That ties the Miami Dolphin record set by Nat Moore back in 1977, and records will be falling quite frequently for these Dolphins offensively for the remainder of the season. But it's a major problem on that play. Both Duper and Moore ended up in the same place because they're getting bumped around by the defense. As you can see, here's Mark Clayton coming off the ball. Pretty difficult to tell where he wanted to go because both he and Matt Moore got bumped to the outside and Clayton found the crease and caught the ball. 
Again, the hesitancy of that secondary that's been racked by injuries with the loss of four cornerback starters. When you're down close to the goal line, you have to play those receivers tight. You cannot give them any area. Well, they played them well. Unfortunately, Dan Marino with that gun threw the ball. Ron Shaman gets it through the uprights. He put the thrill back in the place-kicking game for the Dolphins, not having a good year. But he ties the game with 14-41 remaining in the first half. Tonight, a linebacker has the greatest game of his life as Old Spice deodorant and antiperspirant present NFL Classics. You go bumper to bumper at 200 miles an hour on a hot track from morning till night, you'll find out just how strong your deodorant is. I'm K.O. Yarmour. I drive race cars. This is my deodorant, Old Spice Stick. Hey, Old Spice isn't just strong, it's 24 hours strong. Old Spice Stick is the only leading deodorant that says it right on the label. You want a deodorant that lasts longer than you do, this is the one. Now Old Spice Stick also comes in a new fresh scent. All season long, the Miami Dolphins had survived on defense. And now, in the 1982 AFC Championship game, linebacker A.J. Dilley broke records and jet hearts as he led the Killer Bees with three interceptions. The last one for 35 yards and the killer touchdown, shutting out New York and taking the Dolphins to their fourth Super Bowl. Thursday, an NFL special as the Washington Redskins battle to stay in their heated divisional race when they tangle with the upset-minded Vikings. Live at 9 Eastern on ABC. Dropping deep for the Jets, Kirk Springs, number 21, Davlin Mullen. Awaiting the kickoff of Von Shaman. Game tied at seven. Jets took the early lead. It's Ken O'Brien with a 28-yard touchdown pass to Freeman McNeil. And Dan Marino has answered with his 33rd touchdown pass of the season as he draws ever closer to the record for touchdowns in a single season held at 36 by Y.A. Tittle and George Blanda. It's interesting. Blanda only played in 12 games that year and Y.A. played in 13. That will catch the end zone. It'll bring about the touchback and the Jets will have possession at the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the Dolphins scoring drives. They did it on the ground. They did it on the air. They did it with a reverse to young Joe Carter. And, of course, the yellow is that five-yard penalty against Gastineau that brought about a third down and five, and Marino answered with the shot to Clayton. Now, the Jets are working with the breeze at their back, and believe me, it does make a difference, particularly to your passing game. Freeman McNeil, single setback. That's Mickey Schuler in motion. It looked like Baumauer would be offside. Stepped across the neutral zone. The flag is down. You saw number 73 easing into that neutral zone. So that should bring up a five-yard penalty and a first and five. I want to remind you, CFA College Football. It'll be Outside, live at 12 o'clock. Number 73, first down. It'll be live at 12 o'clock Eastern this Saturday in a big one from Birmingham, Alabama. Auburn getting it on with Alabama at stake there. A bid to the Orange Bowl. Auburn with a victory, or rather Sugar Bowl, and Auburn with a victory will move into the Sugar Bowl to face Nebraska. And then later, live at 3.30 Eastern time, Florida against Florida State. Two fine football games coming your way this Saturday right here on ABC. So be with us. First down and five following the offside penalty. O'Brien puts one up. And good defensive play by Paul Lankford against Bobby Humphrey. Actually, the ball hung up there, and Lankford was able to cover the ground that he had given up to Humphrey. Well, Lankford did a super job of that time. I don't think he ever saw the football. I think he's reacting to jump uh, to Joe to the receiver to Humphrey. Oh, well, yes, he does. He turns around and sees the ball just enough and Feared as if he was trying to catch it. Yeah, he actually had his hands on it, didn't he? There Marino he has thrown 33 touchdown passes in this, the 13th game, and the night is not over. He has been truly remarkable. So much poise, unflappable in any situation. McNeil pops an opening. Look out. Look oh. out, Freeman. 
And Freeman McNeil, who can run with the best of them when he's healthy, and uh, believe me, is hurting with sore ribs tonight. Breaks off a 35-yard scamper. It'll be first down Jets as they are moving the ball well against Miami. But Miami defensively over the past few games have been giving up a lot of yards on the ground. Ernest Jackson of San Diego got over 100. You saw him do one super job there. Even though the play, the play was designed to go inside, he saw the whole field and right away he knew he wanted to get outside. He broke to the outside and in the great back that he is, picked up 35 yards. I mentioned Jackson of San Diego a week ago getting over 100. Philadelphia Eagles got 177 yards rushing two weeks ago. Don Shula is concerned about his defensive unit. Tony Page, the rookie from Virginia Tech. That's another good first down gain right there up the middle. You know, it's amazing. I think you do things when you practice on it and you get the repetition. But as I mentioned earlier in the game, not too many teams have been close to Miami. So they've had to resort to the pass so they haven't run. Therefore, the defense hasn't that much practice against defending against run. See how well I figured that yeah. out? Well, this Jet team is an excellent running team against anybody. Their, their biggest problem today or the thing they have to guard against is turnovers because that may be the only thing to get them out of this game. Second down and two. The ball at the 29-yard line. Cedric Netter. And Netter is hammered by Bob Brzezinski, one of the strong linebackers against the run. One of the killer bees, as they like to call themselves. The betters, Baumhauer's, Bocamper, Brzezinski, Bowser's, Blackwood, and Blackwood. they got some bees in there, haven't they? There's one of them. This is probably going to require a measurement. Very close to the first down. Sticks on the far side of the field. And they'll bring them out. I remind you, Thursday night we'll be up in Minnesota. The weather, I'm sure, will be vastly different than what we have here tonight. A real balmy temperature in the 70s evening here in Miami. It's going to be good up there. We're going to be inside. We'll be watching Washington. The rejuvenated Washington Redskins with Charlie Brown back on the offense. Theismann having a big day yesterday. Riggins taking a bit of a rest. And they, of course, in a tremendous battle in that NFC Eastern Division that is absolutely locked. The Giants, of course, with their victory yesterday. And the Redskins, Dallas winning on Thanksgiving Day. They're all at eight and five in the Eastern Division of the NFC. I've got a feeling the Vikes are going to play pretty well up there. At home, they haven't had a good season. So if they play loose, they might give them some real trouble. Well, they're a throwing team, and, and most throwing teams will do a We'll play the Washington risk in pretty close. First down and 10 near the 27-yard line. Game tied at 7. We're in the second quarter. O'Brien, a lot of time. Whoa, what an arm. Yeah, and grips one to Lamb Jones. He can't handle as he was covered by Paul Lankfield. It'll be a second down and 10. If nothing else, Don, Ken O'Brien has a rifle himself. You know, you mentioned earlier he that does. they don't know what he can do. His biggest problem has been thus far this year. Everyone knows what Dan Marino can do, and Dan Marino uh, was drafted after Ken O'Brien, but I, I, I agree with you. If they give this kid a chance, I think he's going to show that uh, he, he rated being a number one draft choice. I've got a feeling that he and Marino will have several good games against one another before their careers are ended. That was a beautiful pass. Second down and 10. O'Brien at How about that one? Nicky Schiller, and he'll have a first down inside the 15-yard line. He's in the arms of Glenn Blackwood, but he gets the first down. Mickey Shula having his best season as a Jeff. That was a good throw, uh, O.J., and he threw that thing just a little bit before he made his break. With a great deal of confidence, the ball was right on the money. Shula looks a little nervous over there on the sidelines. And I maybe think what it really is, is, they are not even getting close to O'Brien. There is no pressure on him whatsoever, and we saw what Dan Fouts did last week. And they only sacked Fouts one time, and Fouts threw it over 50 times. And ultimately pulling off the victory. The first loss Miami has suffered in this season. Shula was very adamant about poor linebacker play after that San Diego game. That's probably what's heating him up. The first oh, down oh, and no. and that's one that Lamb Jones is going to think about a long time. Oh, Lamb. Right there, perfectly thrown ball in front of Paul Langford. You can't get much more open yeah, than that. I was going to say, and, and you can't get an easier reception than that. Oh. It's a beautiful throw. He has time. That's the first key. Look at that Lamb ball. Jones beat his man. The ball is dead on the money. Dead solid. Perfect. 
Oh, Lamb. That's a couple now that have been dropped already this season. Or rather tonight as O'Brien is 6 of 13 for 90 yards. And he has the one touchdown shot. A 28 yard into Freeman McNeil. Second down and 10. Ball inside the 16 yard line. We'll look at it from the end zone on this passing situation. Lamb Jones in motion. And O'Brien is back again. He has oh, five, and that was almost picked up. Yeah. Mark Brown was filling in for an injured Ernie Rowe. Almost picked it off. Situation, I think, that time, O.J., where he only watched his receiver and didn't look to that inside. One of the first keys a quarterback takes when he takes the snap is check those linebackers right in front of him. Which way do they drop? I don't know what he did or what he didn't. It appeared that he didn't because he threw it right in the middle and the linebacker hadn't moved. Well, the Miami plays two linebackers, and Mark Brown was the linebacker at the center linebacker. When I say two, two inside backers, Mark Brown was the inside backer on the other side of the field. So I agree with you, John. I don't think he looked over. Third down and ten once again. Oh, wow. We'll cover it from the end zone. End of the lineup, Cedric Minter, number 25. Good receiver out of the backfield. O'Brien on a quick count. He's trying to go to Schuler. No Out of time. Oh. Oh. Schuler was open. It was a fine defensive play. William Judson banged into Schuler in a pass that Schuler probably should have caught because he was hit right in the hands with it. Well, Frank, you call it. I think William Judson timed that play perfectly. But the pass was dead on the money again. So out comes Leahy on fourth down. He'll have a favoring breeze. And the attempt will be from 30 yards. Matt Ryan will place it down. Leahy on the year, 15 of 19. Very accurate from in close. He certainly is. And the Jets have untied it with 11:33 remaining in the first half. They lead the Dolphins 10 to 7. And the enthusiasm has been dampened again here in the Orange Bowl. Get a good look at the first Nissan Maxima SE and find a lot of car. An all-new fuel-injected 3-liter V6 engine, track-stable front-wheel drive, electrically adjustable shocks, more performance than you'll ever need. The new Nissan Maxima SE. A car built to perform on the track is a lot of car for the road. Come alive, come alive. Major motion from Nissan. It's your Datsun dealer. This buzz for everyone in the spotlight before the show begins. This buzz for you. There's no one else who does the quiet yeah. way you do. So here's to you. Tell you what you do. The king of business. Hey, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Oh, <laughs> hey, man. Nice job. This buzz for you. Skating great Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner, JoJo Starbuck and Ken Shelley, plus the amazing Robin Cousins at the International Professional Figure Skating Championships. When ABC's Wide World of Sports returns Saturday, December 8th. Don Chula has shown the concern on the sidelines. The Dolphins not playing their Dolphin types of football, but they have not played well defensively over the past four weeks. A look at Fulton Walker as Pat Leahy kicks off. And again, with that trailing breeze, Leahy is out of the end zone. But the Jets able to move the ball in the air and on the ground thus far against the Dolphins. And it has head coach Don Shula quite concerned. Tim Bocamper, the defensive right end and a former All-Pro linebacker, is being attended to there on the sidelines. They're fixing up a shoulder pad. So Miami brings out their explosive offensive unit with a first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. They bring out dual setbacks. Tony Nathan, good runner, good receiver, and Woody Bennett, the workhorse. Moreno fires a shot to Clayton. He stays in bounds and gets the first down out near the 34 yard line. And they did a tattoo job on. Mark Gaston on that play, they did a little quick roll to the right, and they had about four guys hit Gaston. And once they got him inside, I think the entire Miami Dolphin offensive line took a shot at him. I talked to him right before the game, Mark Gaston, and he really was incensed about what's been going on. He said, hey, "Bringing that tight end down on me." He said, "These legs are pretty valuable." And he'll tell you about it. He's been getting hammered with the tight end and the tackle, and the Dolphins have been using their center, Dwight Stevenson, to block with him. 
did it again. Tony Nathan. Nathan, good running. He'll be short of the first down by about a foot. Mark is limping a little bit, OJ. I don't know what that means, but something hurt a little bit that last time. You got to give Shula credit because that was a well-designed play. Cleveland Green, number 74, was blocking Mark Gassineau. Took him at the line of scrimmage. Let him take the inside. Look because at him, the right play here. is designed to go outside. Let him take the inside. Perfect. Because they want to go right outside of him. And there's no way Mark Gassineau can get back into play on that. Well, they, they definitely are working on it, but we look at it. Mark, as we mentioned at the top of the show, leads the league in individual sacks for the quarterback. The thing about Miami, they don't let them sack Marino all year. They've only sacked him six times, I think. That's indeed right, and seven for the entire team. They're looking at a possible other NFL record. Fewest sacks. Second and short yardage. Marino with a waist down. Throws one away, looking for Clayton. He was in between defenders. And Dan Johnson, the tight end, well covered. So it'll bring up third down, short yardage for Marino. Who has the record for fewest sacks? Cardinals. Well, it was the Cardinals in 70 and San Francisco in 70 and the Cardinals in 75. And they gave up eight sacks. So that's Miami has given up seven thus far. I think that's really a, a startling statistic when you think about many teams, how their quarterback sacks more than that sometimes in one ball game to be the team with the fewest penalties so when you're not getting the quarterback you're usually holding a little third and short Pete Johnson the big man is there oh whoa oh, and he, he there. is stacked up yet I don't think he got there Gilbo number 84 was there as was Marty Lyons and Pleco coming down and I think that the that the Jets over offsides and it was one of those that somebody kind of just jumped right there at the last and I believe it's going to be an offside against the Jets. Flag is down. Here's the call. Fred Wyant. Well, that will be the first down for Miami. Now, that's twice a situation where a penalty has cost them one time, maybe a touchdown. Offside defense. First down. That's the rest of the speed of the Jets outside receivers. Wesley Walker with a quadricep muscle bruise, severe one. And that is Bob Avellini, a nine-year veteran of the Chicago Bears that got into a little bit of a problem with Mike Ditka. They cut him loose, and when Pat Ryan couldn't go, they brought him in here to the Jets as a backup. On first and ten, Marino reads the defense, tries to whip one into Duper, incomplete. Well, Gaston will put a little pressure on there. They had a somewhat of a delayed blitz. Kyle Clifton came in, and you saw Marino try to short arm that one. Take a look at Mark Gasno, 99, probably the best pass rusher, maybe to ever play this game. Have to put him right up there with Deacon Jones, the best I've ever seen. That's Cleveland Green, who did a pretty good job on Gastineau three weeks ago in the victory Miami had over the Jets. But they also will bring Dwight Stevenson. When they want to go deep, they'll bring the center, Dwight Stevenson, particularly when they work against that 4-3. Stevenson has no man over him at center. Second and 10, Tony Nathan. And Nathan, with about a three-yard pickup, it'll bring up a third down and seven. So Mark Gasson will take the outside, which is containment, and still get back inside to make the tackle. Now, that's something he's doing this year that uh, he got a lot of criticism for last year. They said he didn't play the run so well, and a lot of teams picked on him. Well, this off the season, he must have worked on it because he's been playing the run fairly decently this year. Jets only have 31 sacks in it tonight, and Gastineau has 18 and a half of those. So they depend upon him. They bring in the prevent defense, three down linemen, third down and seven. Flag is down. I think that was my, that was Cleveland moved that time. Marino. Boy, can that guy oh. run. Mark Clayton. Can that guy throw? That is no. his 13th touchdown of the season. That ties the team record, but a flag is down at the line of scrimmage, and yeah, they're going to bring it back. we got a new rule about the way the offensive line lines up, and I got a feeling that maybe Cleveland, I mean, yeah. that their line was bold on the right side, and Cleveland Green looked like he was a little off the ball. Looks like he started back a little bit too quick, too. But what that doesn't take anything away from that throw and catch except six points. <laughs> what a pretty throw and catch. Illegal motion, number 74. Well, it was Cleveland. Third down. Cleveland Green on the right side. You can't blame him. He's just a little bit nervous out there. Yeah. He's been filling in for a real fine offensive tackle. And Cleveland Green has been growing. But they miss Eric Loxo. 
went out with a knee injury the end of September. Cleveland Green has stepped in there and started ever since. He's a good athlete. He has quick feet, and on the Miami basketball team on the offseason, every team has a little basketball team that goes around. He's their high point man. He averages near 30 points a game. But does he have a left-handed hook? Third down and 12. The ball at the 48-yard line following the penalty. Duper right, Clayton left. Good pass protection. And almost picked off by Kirk Springs, the intended receiver, had slipped and fallen. It was Matt Moore who was wide open, but he slipped and was unable to get to the ball. And that will bring up fourth down, and Reggie Roby will bring out his big foot to work against that win. Well, the Jets has got to be happy with number 21, Kirk Springs, tonight. He seems to be everywhere. Look at the legs on Reggie Roby. 6'3", 235 pounds. He drops the ball really high. It reminds me of years ago, a punter for the Cleveland Browns named Horace Gilliam used to drop it that high. He's a two-step punter, too, Frank. Kirk Springs calls for the fair catch, executes at the 12-yard line. The Jets continue to lead the Dolphins. 10 to 7, 951 remaining in the first half in a game the Dolphins desperately want to win. They want the home field. When an alkaline battery goes dead, you throw it away and buy a new one. This is a GE rechargeable. When it goes dead, you recharge it. It costs more than batteries you throw away, but lasts up to four years. Used 10 hours a week, this toy would use over 300 long life batteries to just two GE rechargeables. So if you're still throwing away batteries, you're throwing away a lot of money. A little confusion can be fun, but not when you're looking at long distance phone companies. Because all companies aren't the same, you have to watch out for the unexpected. No operator service and no service for many small towns. Different levels of transmission quality and no immediate credit for wrong numbers. Only one company comes with no surprises. AT&T. The more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. The Miami Dolphins have clinched the AFC East. They are 11 and 1. Of course, Denver is 11 and 2, and Seattle is 11 and 2. And Miami knows that a win tonight, and they control the playoff picture if they can win the remaining games. On first down, Freeman McNeil goes out over the 15 yard line. A gain of four. It'll be second and six. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Eyewitness News follows the game here on WABC TV New York. A couple of fine defensive players. On your left is Mark Gastineau, and of course, Estel Klecko on the right, coming back from a serious knee injury a year ago. Has been moved out to the defensive end for tonight's play. That's where he performed for six years for the Jets. This is Freeman McNeil on the second down call, and McNeil will have a first down out near the 24-yard line. For those of you who might have just joined us, the Jets got on the scoreboard first tonight. Ken O'Brien, 28-yard touchdown pass to Freeman McNeil. Dan Marino answered that in early in the second quarter. Five-yard touchdown pass to Mark Clayton. It was Marino's 33rd touchdown pass of the season. Clayton's 12th reception for a touchdown. There he is right there, young second-year man. And Pat Leahy has put the Jets back in front with a 30-yard field goal. They lead 10 to 7. First down and 10. Marion Barber hammered by Bowser. He'll lose a yard. Let him string that one out, didn't he? Well, he, he, he was running away from some pursuit, unfortunately. He didn't pick up a block outside, and there's not much you can do under those uh, conditions but turn up, put your head down, and take your lick. That's it. Let me have a yard and go back to the huddle. Freeman McNeil now has taken over the lead in rushing in the AFC, replacing Ernest Jackson of the San Diego Chargers. Freeman McNeil, 970, 976 yards. And he's missed a lot of action with rib injury this year. McNeil once again on second and ten. Oh, they're doing a job for him. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> and doing a fine blocking job for Freeman McNeil. And he'll have another first down out of the 35-yard line. He had some help, didn't he? You see a great job. They're running to the right with Big Marvin Powell and Dan Alexander. And, of course, Mickey Shuler fine blocking tight end. And he's got nothing but room. And under this situation, you can you can run for 
six-yard average, which he's doing thus far this game. It is amazing, Frank, that he has just taken over the AFC lead when you consider he has missed two-and-a-half football games because of those rib injuries. First down and 10, 35-yard line, McNeil. Already, the 754 remaining in the second quarter has 75 yards rushing. That has got to be concerning Don Shula. O'Brien. Huh. Yeah. Oh. Slides one in that Mickey Shuler uh, can't yeah. handle. That's unreal. That's two now that Mickey Shuler, usually a sure-handed receiver, has been unable to handle. And Lamb Jones dropped one in the end zone. Could it be the ball he's throwing, uh, Donna? Oh. I know the receivers from Miami say that Marino's ball is an easy ball to catch. I think that's so much psychological stuff involved with that stuff. If the ball's there, catch it. You know, I mean, I, they've asked, you know, was it left-handed passer? Is it harder to catch because the spin's a little bit different? The only thing would be the speed. Some, some guys have a way of drilling a real short pass too hard. That one I didn't think was thrown too hard. Second down and 10. O'Brien's last four attempts have been incomplete. Not his fault. Cedric Minter, the rookie free agent out of Boise State who came down from Canada and just came off the injured reserve tonight. I want to remind you at halftime, Jim Lampley is here in the Orange Bowl with us. We'll be looking at some of the action from yesterday. Minter picked up three yards. It'll be third down and seven. Jets on top, ten to seven. Clock moving, close to seven minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Big third down for the Jets. They've been controlling the game for time of possession thus far, and even if they don't score on this drive, they would love to get a first down and keep their defense off the field and Jones loads it up on the right side this time the pressure the first time on O'Brien and it is Doug Betters getting help from A.J. Douay loss of eight on the first sack I think that was caused as much by good defensive coverage in the secondary as anything else it looked like one of the jet receivers either slipped or bumped into somebody too slow in opening up well, we may have seen something about Ken O'Brien on that play, too. He had a little room to his left, and he wasn't able to buy much time, so that's something we should look for. Chuck Ramsey to punt. You're looking at Fulton Walker. Injured early in the year with a broken thumb. Now back at full speed for the Dolphins. Excellent return man. Ramsey spanks it. Walker... The fair catch at the 26-yard line. So Miami gets the football back with 6.28. Remaining in the first half. And the Jets leading by three. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl in just a moment. What are you hurting the most, Jimmy? Name it. Better straighten up. Yeah, we don't want to disappoint your fans. No. The best never comes easy. Bring out your best. That's why there's nothing else like it. Hey, Jimmy, give her just that. Up. You had him right from the gate. Bud Light. Your best deserves the best. Two Bud Lights. Bring out your best. Filling light beer with a first name and taste. Hey, Jimmy! All right. From inside the huddle, learn what it takes to throw the perfect pass. Watch 2020 Thursday. One of our many fine cameramen, Tommy O'Connell has a new little daughter in his family nancy giving birth to aaron elizabeth and well you give up a lot of things hey uh, tommy way to go smell a lot of things to cover monday night football that birth right at the end of our game last week pittsburgh and new orleans we wish them all well first down and 10. miami with the football at their own 26 yard line they're down 10-7 tony nathan single setback nathan outside has the first down out over the 40-yard line, close to the 42, and Tony Nathan, not spectacular, but he does everything so well. 
He does. He does a real good job of running the ball inside. Now, this is a play that some backs in the league, you'd have seen them maybe 20, 30 yards further downfield, but Tony does a good job of finding the hole first, and here's where he may should have been, been exploding instead of slowing down, and uh, one thing about it, when you hesitate, as you say, he who hesitates is lost. Is lost. Nathan yeah. in tonight like with that. 40 receptions, over five, 435 yards rushing, so he has provided a lot of offense for the Dolphins. Nathan again, another big opening, and Nathan works it for another first down. So a good example of how well he runs inside on that play. It's part of it. He's quick. Jets is running, I mean, the um, Dolphins run a lot of these trap plays that they like to run. And the influence. Right through. through there. Well, that was an influence. Yeah, play. Foster see. pulled right, and the He's Jets hard. pursue as they do so well. Usually they work something like that on Gastineau, but they pulled Roy Foster, the left guard. He came right back into the vacant spot. Marty Lyons had gone with him, the defensive tackle. Nice play. Almost impossible not to go with that guard. You're right in front of him, and you're going to take a move and try to follow him. I've always liked those kind of plays. They don't work. The backs hey, come back and no. talk to you. About I was going to tell you that Spitting the backs teeth. don't like that play. <laughs> <laughs> the backs doesn't. They don't want to run that. <laughs> we used to like to do that against Bob Lilly. Oh, well, yeah. I didn't like to do it, but <laughs> it seemed to work against Bob <laughs> Lilly in his early years, and then he caught on to it. Yeah, and he ate up a lot of backs. Say, so here, you're going to run the ball into this hole right at this tackle. Well, who's going to block the tackle? Nobody, because the guard is going to pull, and he should go with the guard. Well, what if you don't go with the guard? They don't ask so many questions. Not red-hot numbers for Dan Marino. You saw 6 of 11. He's under 100 yards. First and 10 in Jet territory at the 47. Uh, Marino gets it to the tight end, Bruce Hardy. Gain of about four is all. He does such a good job of protecting me, though. My gosh, he just has got lots of room. Lots of time. He's so confident back there. He's had such a great two years. And nothing doing it like doing it. When you keep doing it, man, you just feel more. Let's do it some more. Well, End of the night, he was over 3,600 yards and threatening the all-time single-season record of Dan Fouts, who racked up 4,802 yards. He's just a little over 1,000 short of that mark. On second and six. Oh. Marino goes down. His seventh sack of the season. Down goes Marino. And getting to Marino, the Jets. Barry Bennett. Barry Bennett. Barry got to him once before when they played. Barry got one time and Mark got one. So, well, if they're going to get that record done, they're going to have to protect him a little better than this because they got, now they have eight sacks for a team. What he was looking for is Dan Johnson, who was all wide open running across the field number 87 but unfortunately or fortunately for the Jets they got a guy named Bennett who got there first it's about five seconds so the line did a good job just 3 30 and the clock is moving remaining in the half is third down 13 ball at the 49 yard line of the Dolphins from the shotgun two men on Gastineau a lot of time for Marino and wide open is Clayton and Clayton comes down with the first down brilliantly thrown pass uh, by Marino he zipped it in there between defenders Clayton had run a good pattern he was wide open the only way you can stop this Miami passing game is you're gonna have to keep Clayton and and Duper at the line of scrimmage as you can see if you give them that much room you can't stop them one of the reasons Don Shula's had a history of having smallish wide receivers little nifty guys like Twilly and Marlon Briscoe and these two guys who are only 5'9", Clayton and Duper, is because it's tough to keep them on the line of scrimmage because they're so quick. Marino now 8 of 13, 91 yards, he has the one touchdown. First down and 10. Joe Carter, Ricky from Alabama, gets inside the 20-yard line in the arms of Daryl Ray. Gain of almost 7. Joe Carter came into the game, as we mentioned earlier, with a 5.5 average, and in this game, he must be averaging near 10 yards a carry. Uh, sort of reminds me of Mike Garrett a little bit. Got that good quickness. That quickness. That yeah. That's the time remaining in the half as we head down close to the two-minute warning. Both teams have three timeouts remaining. Fine football game. Played very well on the part of both teams. The Jets surprisingly able to move the ball on defense. Or rather on offense and their defense battered as it is and the secondary has played well. Two minutes remaining in the first half. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl in a moment. Hey, you thinking what I'm thinking? 
Meet Nissan's hottest truck, the best-selling King Cab, re-engineered for 85. To hitch a tough, smooth side, strong box to nine cubic feet of lockable storage and jump seats behind the bus. Right now, special incentives from Nissan can help save you big money at your Datsun dealer. But hurry, offer limits. Strength. Pride. Tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdales have been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste, because this Bud's for you. One of them very memorable, Super Bowl III, Joe Namath said, we will beat the New York Jets. Came out and promptly did so. Now they're going that to was just almost 15 years ago. They beat the Baltimore Colts. That was a big well, upset, wasn't uh, it? It was Baltimore, and of course, coaching Baltimore at the time, Don Shula. Well, we're going to go to a Super Bowl where they've never had one. We're going to go to Palo Alto. Oh, Second right. down and three. Miami with two minutes remaining in the first half, trailing 10-7. to seven. They have the ball at the 20-yard line of the Jets. And trying to get it to the tight end, Dan Johnson is incomplete. It'll bring up third down and three. Had that ball been around the numbers, I think that would have been a touchdown. Yeah. He had good position on the defensive back. It's strange because most of the Jets' defensive secondary men were playing in the middle, and they left Clayton one-on-one, -on -one and they pretty much had Duper one-on-one. -on -one. Just the end of it. If he'd have got it up in front, you're right, Don. Yeah, he could have. He could have caught it. Kurt Springs had him to the outside, but he had good position, blocked him off to the inside. This drive started at the 26-yard line of the Dolphins. This is the eighth play of the drive, and Don Shula, you know, he really gets into a football game, but he is really exercised here tonight. The Jets had a mix-up on defense that time, Frank, and you can see him waving to the bench back and forth, so they had to call timeout. They didn't have the right kind of guys in there. So the Jets use one of their timeouts. 154 remaining on the clock. The Dolphins have three timeouts remaining. It'll be third and three when we come back. DP Jim Pack. Fifty professional exercises at home. DP. The phones you lease from AT&T have to earn the name Old Reliable. We test them to make sure they're tough enough to survive almost anything you can dish out. And that's why, if there ever is trouble, AT&T will replace your leased phones free at our phone center. Or just call toll free. AT&T will worry about the hang-ups, so you won't have to. AT&T Consumer Sales and Service. Pacing the sidelines. A little more nervous tonight than he ordinarily is. He does get into the game. Unlike the Tom Landry's. Very emotional on the sidelines. I think mainly because of his defense, Frank. The oh, way they played in, in, in recent weeks. They can't go to the Super Bowl playing run defense as they've had the last three weeks or pass defense in the last two weeks. Third down and three. Moreno will go from the T formation. Tony Nathan single setback. Call him another receiver, however. Comes around the horn. Nathan gets a good block in front. And Nathan just pulls inside the five to the four-yard line. It'll be first down, goal to go. And that is a Shula play. You know that he picked up in frequency. He had Nathan split over on the left side. He came all the way around Marino. No one was there. And he had Dwight Stevenson, 57, out in front with a good block. I would have said that they were trying to take advantage of uh, Gastineau's eagerness getting over there. But it seems as if a linebacker should have been there, Don. Should I mean, have been Greg Buttle would normally be there, but he's not playing. They have Rusty Gilbo over there. And uh, they've been picking on this side of the field. He took, All night. I think he took advantage of that defense where they didn't have very many linebackers in there that time. The big dude is in. Pete Johnson, former Cincinnati great, traded to San Diego and came to the Dolphins. Fourth game of the season. They like to use him in close. 
He weighs close to 250, number 46. But Marino rolls out. Marino took a tremendous risk, tried to get it to Dan Johnson, and that one could have been picked off very easily. That was definitely jump ball. Yeah. One if, of the few ill-advised passes I've seen from Marino. If I didn't think, if I didn't uh, know that Shula calls the plays, I might even accuse Marino of trying to get the touchdown record here. First down and goal on a five and Pete Johnson there. I'm going to run a little bit before I start throwing the ball. He had three jets around there. That ball could very easily be intercepted. Second down, goal to go at the four-yard line. Now, Tony Nathan joins Woody Bennett with two setbacks. Pete Johnson out of the lineup. They're not really in close enough to where they like to use Pete Johnson. Bennett tries to hurdle into the end zone, and he's hammered back. He'll get close to the one-yard line. So Woody fumbled twice last week against San Diego, but that's something he doesn't do very well. I think he only fumbled one time with over 100 carries coming into that game. Not a critical of fumble early in that game. That was Daryl Ray, one of those questionable starting defensive backs tonight. So many of them injured. He slowed up there. there. That's him, number 28. No, once again, that was Kurt Springs, number 21, that came underneath him. Made a super play on it. And Daryl Ray was right there with him. Now you got Pete Johnson in there. Now it is third down, goal to go. The ball just inside the two-yard line. There's Pete Johnson. They hold him short. Fine defensive play. That was John Woodring. Little linebacker John Woodring. It'll be fourth down, goal to go. And they are about a yard short. He's thinking about it, isn't he? Yes, he is. I I was watching the Jet sideline, and Daryl Ray and some of the guys are celebrating, but they're playing against Don Shula. He's saying, go for it. And meanwhile, the 30-second clock is ticked down to 14 seconds. The end of decision forces the timeout, but with only 21 seconds remaining, you want to be certain of a fourth down goal to go at the one-yard line. The Jets lead 10-7. to seven. We'll be back in just a moment. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. The kids love these Space Patrol walkie-talkies. They work indoors and out. Flexible antenna, even Morse code keys with an alphabet guide on the front. So you can either talk or send secret messages. Uh oh looks like I'm getting a secret message now. K, S, D. He says, thanks, Dad. Now, how do you say you're welcome? Space Patrol walkie-talkies from 995 to 1995. Only at Radio Shack. Hope we're going to a New Year's Eve party. <clears throat> I'd prefer an office party. I want to go to a school Christmas party. McDonald's Chicken McNuggets 20-pack, the life of any holiday party. How do I look? Delicious. Golden brown is your color. Whoopee! Let's go to a sleigh ride party. It's a good time for the great taste. Parties, parties. Oh. That's all you 20-packs ever think of. Oh, McDonald's. Time for McDonald's gift certificates. 50 cents each or a book of 10 for $5. Thursday, an NFL special as the Washington Redskins battle to stay in their heated divisional race when they tangle with the upset-minded Vikings. Live at 9 Eastern on ABC. The decision has been made. 21 seconds remaining in the half. The Miami Dolphins have a fourth down. Goal to go. The ball just at the one-yard line. Don Shula had Dan Marino on the sidelines. In the game now, Pete Johnson. He is the short yardage specialist with nine touchdowns. It's interesting to see where Don Shula thinks the weakness might be in this Jet defense on this play. Let's see where he goes. That's Pete Johnson, big number 46. Play action. Oh, did not pull the Jets. And coming down with a Bruce Hardy. The play action didn't hold the Jets. It was a good effort by Dan Marino getting the ball to Hardy, who had to reach for it. He comes down with it, and Miami will take a lead into the locker room at halftime. That's the play action. Interesting call. Not much of a fake there, but most of the linebackers are, key, are keyed on the running back, so they wouldn't be looking at the quarterback much anyway. Davlin Mullen, the cornerback number 20, was in between a rock and a hard spot. Had he not come up, 
then Marino could have walked into the end zone. When he did come up, it opened up. Bruce Hardy, six points Miami. They have the lead for the first time tonight. Now, had he come up a little quicker, Marino might not be able to get rid of that ball. Von Schaumann. Strzok gets it down. Von Schaumann through the uprights. And the Dolphins take the lead, 14 to 10. Look at these defensive backs. They're going to be running, running towards the running back. So the fake worked. Once again, as you said, Frank, if Mullen would have had uh, made a decision to come full steam or drop off, he may have been able to prevent the TD. So the decision by Don Shula pays off. We'll be back after this message from the National Football League. He's Freeman McNeil of the New York Jets. When he was only seven, he lost his father. That's why he knows how these boys who have lost their fathers feel. Their fathers were friends of mine. This is Josh Chapin, the son of the talented songwriter and musician Harry Chapin. And this is Donnie Ledbetter, son of the respected NFL coach Robert Ledbetter. Their father's untimely deaths have brought him closer to these boys. Today, he's become sort of a surrogate father to them, trying to provide some of the relationships that are so important. That's what these folks are doing through Big Brothers and Big Sisters programs supported by the United Way. People are volunteering all across the country, wherever there's someone who needs somebody. Maybe that somebody can be you. Find out more about Big Brothers and Big Sisters programs. Be a United Way volunteer. And thanks, because thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. That message brought to you by the Jets Freeman McNeil, who genuinely loves kids, and of course the National Football League. Kirk Springs and Johnny Hector have dropped deep. They're back there for the Jets. Davin Mullen also with Von Schaumann. With 15 seconds on the clock. <laughs> Onside effort. Tony Page is right there. Yeah. Nine seconds remaining. The Jets have three timeouts. They'll be looking for field goal possibilities when we come back. for the crew restoring America's pride in liberty. This bus for you. You know America takes pride in what you do. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this bus for you. The Jets on that kick by Vaughn Shaman have good field position. Tony Page was right there, covered at the 35-yard line. Keep in mind, however, they only have nine seconds remaining. But they have a pretty good field goal kicker who has already hit for 52 yards this season in Pat Leahy. Whatever you do, you should, well, I guess they're going to play it safe. Why? I don't know. But Edric Minter and Minter out of the 40-yard line. The game of about seven in the final two seconds. I don't understand that. Kickoff. That's the end of the first half. And the Dolphins, who trailed for most of the first half, leave the field, leading 14 to 10 over the Jets. Stick around for highlights with Jim Lampert.
Wednesday, Colts in a terrifying race across Mexico. We only got another 600 miles to go. And the competition's a real killer. You think that's a race official? No. You tell Seavers that if he wins this race, she's dead. On the bull guy. Wednesday. During a game, I'm just like a big kid. But off the field, I act like the grown man I really am. I even do my Christmas shopping early. See? My son's gonna love this Hess toy truck. The lights work, and the hose pulls out. And here's the best part. It's got a built-in bank that holds real money. Hey, Joe, the bank opens up. Sure, that's how I get the quarterback. The Hess toy truck bank comes fully assembled for $4.99, with an ever-ready battery included, only at Hess stations. Coming up tonight on Eyewitness News, controversy follows a shooting in which a police officer kills a suspected car thief. And Mr. and Mrs. Joe Namath, right after the game. General Hospital's Laura, tomorrow, 4.30. The curtains will open on a very special event as skating greats gather for a dynamic day. See former world champions Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner, along with three-time U.S. champions JoJo Starbuck and Ken Shelley, as they delight us in the pairs competition. Also, the fiery Toller Cranston and the acrobatic Robin Cousins take off in the men's competition. The International Professional Figure Skating Championships will set the stage for the return of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Saturday, December 8th. Tonight's halftime is being brought to you by Computerland, with over 700 stores worldwide, bringing business and computers together. Halftime on a breezy and beautiful night in the Orange Bowl. The Dolphins have been challenged face to face, but now lead the Jets by four points. And we're ready for highlights. Three weeks remain in the regular season. Four teams, Miami, San Francisco, Chicago, and Denver, are in the playoffs. Fifteen others are still in the fight, including Seattle, which will be in if they win or if New England loses this coming Sunday. And as you watch the highlights of yesterday's Seattle-Denver game, a terrific game, you might ponder this. Number 80 for the Seahawks, Steve Largent, began his career in the uniform of the Houston Oilers and may end it in the Hall of Fame. Later in halftime, you'll see another receiver who shares the same distinction. Mile High Stadium, the Broncos put their 10-game winning streak and their one-game lead in the AFC West on the line against the Seahawks. Seattle controlled the game from this, the first play from scrimmage. Craig looking down the sideline to the Michigan State rookie, Darrell Turner. Turner would make a spectacular grab and go 80 yards for the touchdown that puts Seattle on top 7-0. As you will see later, Turner's big catch also set up a big day for the other Seattle wideout, Steve Largent. Slow half on offense for Denver in the first half, but with 4.53 remaining before half, time, Elway was able to throw this 19-yard touchdown pass to Butch Johnson, which tied things up at 10-10. But Seattle would untie it in the third period as Steve Largent was on his way to the most productive day of his nine-year career. This pass over the middle to Largent went for 65 yards total and set up the touchdown that made it 17-10 Seattle. Key differences in the ball game, Seattle with the ball control passing attack kept the football for 38 minutes. Denver had no pass rush and no third down conversions in the game. Nevertheless, Elway was able to get the Broncos into position to tie the game with 39 seconds remaining when barefoot kicker Rich Carlos hit the right upright from 25 yards out. It wound up 27-24 Seattle. Rematch in Seattle, December 15. Yesterday in the Louisiana Superdome, the 49ers clinched the title in the NFC West and tuned up for the playoffs. Joe Montana got off to a slow start, missed his first seven passes, but was patient as Wendell Tyler picked up the slack on the ground. This touchdown pass from Montana to Freddie Solomon in the third period made it 21-3 49ers. And the San Francisco defense would get its first touchdown of the year, an interception return of 53 yards by rookie linebacker Todd Shell out of Brigham Young, one of the seven interchangeable linebackers who have been the key to the 49er defense this year. Yesterday, eight sacks for San Francisco, two of them by Shell, two of them by Fred Dean, prompting Richard Todd to suggest that San Francisco, not Miami, is the best team in the NFL. Prior to this year, the Minnesota Vikings had owned the Chicago Bears, but now the Bears have beaten the Vikings twice on their way to their first division title since 1963. Another flawless game for pickup quarterback Steve Fuller. This 30-yard touchdown to Willie Galt made it 7-3 first period as the Bears were on their way to a route. Singletary led the defense with 11 and a half tackles. Peyton with his eighth game this year over 100 yards. You'll see the Bears next Monday night. 
<laughs> okay, Dennis, you know you need a computer, but you don't know where to go for help, right? Right. There's only one. No problem. Really? You want a store that gives you a choice. Right. One that gives you support. Right. One that makes it simple instead of confusing. Right. Easy instead of hard. Yes. Yeah. And the one that's helped more kinds of people buy more kinds of computers than any other store in the world. Right. That's the one I want. And you want this one. Welcome to Computerland. How may we help you? Someday, when Mark sets his sights on the judge's wild niece... Family McCormick, that means out of bounds. ...he gets much more than he bargained for. Hard castle to McCormick, then. No one has ever escaped from Alcatraz. No one was tough enough. Daring enough. I may have found a way out of here. Until Clint Eastwood escaped from Alcatraz. All starting at 8, 7 central. Sunday. There were several significant milestones in yesterday's play. Among them, Joe Theismann broke a Redskin career passing record that had been held by Sonny Jurgensen. John Riggins moved past Don Hudson into third place on the career touchdown list for the league. Some of the record breaking has been facilitated by the switch in 1978 from 14 to 16 games, as will Eric Dickerson's new single season rushing record if he is able to surpass O.J. Simpson's magic number of 2003. We're going to look at Dickerson now, and after him, Charlie Joyner, who, like Steve Largent, began his career as a Houston Oiler, and like Largent, may end it in the Hall LA's of LA's one-point victory over Tampa Bay was ultimately decided by their early block of an extra point kick, but the focus was on Eric Dickerson. 124 of those 191 yards came in the fourth quarter. This 51-yarder, his longest run of the day. Dickerson needs to average 124 yards a game over the last three to break in 16 games. The NFL rushing record O.J. Simpson set in 14 games back in 1973. And meanwhile, Charlie Joyner and Jan Stenerud are the only two surviving original AFL players in the NFL. Stenerud holds a lot of kicking records, so it's fitting that yesterday Joyner broke Charlie Taylor's career receiving record with this catch, one of six he had on the day. The Steelers were routing the San Diego Chargers 52 to 24. Joyner, quite typically, was somewhat upset that he had not broken the career receiving record in a victorious effort for his ball club. This is the Apple IIc personal computer. Small as it is, it can coordinate all the systems of a 50-story building. Now, you'll probably use it for everything from homework to office work, but it's good to know it's powerful enough for bigger jobs, like turning the lights off. The Apple IIc. It's a lot bigger than it looks. Tuesday, Jack and Vicky fly to Acapulco. There's someone on the way! It's the honeymoon they never had. Three's a crowd. Then... Housekeeper. <laughs> what a fun idea. Angela's best friend falls for Tony. <laughs> Who's the boss? Then, an ABC comedy special. It's cute. It's very cute. Your favorite stars tell the funniest jokes they ever heard. Clean, clean joke. The laughs begin at 8, 7 central. Tonight's halftime is also being brought to you by Apple Computer, makers of the new Apple IIc, a serious computer of incredible proportions. Halftime in the Orange Bowl, Dolphins leading Jets 14-10. More football very shortly, but first more highlights. In the National Football Conference, division titleists San Francisco and Chicago are in the playoffs. Five teams, the Giants, the Cardinals, the Redskins, the Cowboys, and the Rams fighting for the remaining three spots. Important to remember this about all five. Each controls its destiny. Any of the five which wins its three remaining games is in the playoff. And we're going to take a look now at Washington, a team which has made it into the last two Super Bowls and is still in playoff contention this year, despite the longest injury list in the NFL. Before yesterday, the Giants hadn't come from as many as two touchdowns down to win in the second half since 1972. 
so when Bill Kenny hit Carlos Carson for this 34-yard touchdown with 9.18 to go and put the Chiefs on top 27 to 14, it looked as though New York was about to drop out of the first place tie in the NFC East. But Bill Sims came back with a touchdown pass to Bobby Johnson. Then with just over two minutes to go, this game winner to tight end Zeke Moat. For years, the Giants have been searching for a competent tight end. Last year, they drafted two ahead of Moat, signed him as a free agent. He has solved the problem. The Washington Redskins had to go most of the day yesterday without John Riggins, who didn't play after the first scoring drive. But rookie Keith Griffin filled the gap on the ground, and Joe Theismann had a terrific day in the air. Charlie Brown was back after eight weeks out with a fractured ankle. He caught this touchdown pass that made it 24-0 Washington in the second period. And with Brown back in the lineup, Art Monk will be even harder to stop on the other side, as he demonstrated yesterday with 11 catches. You'll see the skins Thursday night against the Vikes in Minnesota. Tuesday, Paper Dolls at its new time, 10, 9 central. Lauren Hutton joins television's hottest cast. Every week, Morgan Fairchild, Lloyd Bridges, and Lauren Hutton. The Empire of Paper Dolls at its new time, 10, 9 central. Tomorrow. An ABC News business brief brought to you by Federal Express. Now from New York, Dan Quartz. Good evening. Major banks today lowered the prime rate to 11.5%, the fifth cut in two months. Texaco says a one-time fourth quarter charge will reduce its profits by $765 million. GM is recalling 3 million 1978, 79, and 80 cars because of possibly faulty rear axles, and Ford is recalling 500,000 1984 and 85 models that may have misaligned rear wheels. Treasury Secretary Reagan today presented President Reagan a modified flat rate tax plan that eliminates most deductions. Now this. Next time you need a copy of something, an overnight is just not fast enough. Here's all you have to say. Zap it to me! On New York financial markets, stocks fell eight points, interest on T-bills edged up, gold plunged nine dollars to its lowest level in two and a half years, and the dollar was sharply higher. That's a Business Brief. I'm Dan Quartz. <laughs> Panasonic introduces a new lightweight video system that's so automatic, it works by itself. The Panasonic video camera focuses by itself, adjusts for changing light by itself, even works in extreme low light all by itself. This Panasonic VHS recorder connects almost by itself and plays back a jitter-free picture in slow motion and stop motion. Put in a pre-recorded movie and this Panasonic gives you hi-fi sound through your stereo. Sound so far superior to ordinary TV, it stands out by itself. Panasonic video systems, just slightly ahead of our time. Unarmed man shot by police. Detail tonight. Halftime activities winding down. Miami over the New York Jets 14 to 10. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Nissan. We're changing our name from Datsun to Nissan, known for high quality cars and trucks for 50 years. Datsun is now Nissan. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Reach for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this bud's for you. And by Skoll Long Cut, the smokeless tobacco that makes it easy to enjoy tobacco without lighting up. Easy to use with the great taste that could only come from Skoll. And by Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. Set to go from the Orange Bowl. The Jets dominant in the first quarter, and Miami finally getting on track. They now lead 14 to 10. The Jets will kick off. Pat Lee bangs it. Deep is Fulton Walker, but Leahy once again taking advantage of that prevailing wind blowing from the open end here in the Orange Bowl. Miami will have a first down. They'll be working against the wind thus far in the first half. Dan Marino was 10 of 17 for 109 yards, two touchdowns. He now has 34 on the season. He is two away from tying the record of Wyatt Tittle and George Bland. The touchdown passes in the single season. He's three away from a new NFL record. The youngster who came up 27th pick a year ago has had a remarkable career already. Took over a year ago in the fourth game, and it has been downhill all the way for this youngster. So much poise on first down. Marino with that quick release to Bruce Hardy. And Hardy out of the 
35 yard line. First down on the first play, a 17 yard pickup. Well, they had the Jets a little confused on that play. If you'll look at 87 and 84, 84 is Hardy, 87 is Johnson. They're both tight ends, and they did a little crisscross on one another. But that was so pretty. He had that yeah. ball up as soon as Hardy uncovered, he was there. 37 yard line. Hardy now five receptions on the night as Marino has worked well at the tight ends. Woody Bennett, single setback for the Dolphins. Marino, again, a brilliant shot oh, wow. to Mark Cooper. He'll have a first down out at the 47 yard line. <laughs> we saw a little bit of this right before the end of the first half. It seemed Miami was getting their offense untracked a little bit, but boy, these first two plays, he is zipping that ball. Duper just makes a little move to the outside. You see right beyond that first down marker. Get those feet down and go out of bounds with another that first down. Ball was practically caught for him. It really first was. First reception of the night. Mark Duper. First down at the 47-yard line. Woody Bennett, single setback. This is Bennett. Flag goes down. We could have a face mask. Tackled by the, the ball at the 33-yard line. Another Dolphin first down on a gain of 19 yards. 17-yard pickup, 11-yard pickup, and now 19. Well, you can blame Mark Gassano if you if you will. I think you're wrong. We see the call there. Definite face mask. Rusty Gilboy, you'll see number number 94. Watch him now. His job is to stop the run out there, and you'll see him. Way out here, getting held, <laughs> getting held by Cleveland Green. Uh, the officials missed that one. And there's there the face mask. Daryl Ray getting the hand in. The first down now at the 28-yard line. The Dolphins 11 and 1 on the season. They clinched the AFC Eastern Division, but they know if they win tonight, they win against the Raiders next week, then Indianapolis, then the Cowboys. They will be in the playoffs as long as they last, right through the AFC Championship game. That's what they want. They play better here in Miami. Look out. White oh. flag. The yep. flag is down. Clayton and Davlin Mullen were mixed up at about the 10-yard line, and the flag drops. Well, you saw something happen on that play that Mark Clayton and Mark Duper will do as well as any receiver in football. They can adjust to the ball. He didn't catch the ball, but he made a nice adjustment to the ball. He knew where he was. He realized the only way he can keep him catching this ball is if Mullen interfered with him, and it, that's exactly what Mullen did. He was pushing with that left hand. They were right on top of it. The first down will be at the seven-yard line. First down, goal to go. It's amazing. These kids have been in the league just two years, and they run such precise patterns. They catch the ball well, and they can adjust to the ball, and they're noted as speed receivers. They've also got a nice, they've always learned how to fake that. You see him falling back, hand is, I'm totally out of control because I've been violated. Well, I think he was going to catch the ball if he wasn't pushed. Get the feeling that Don Chula had a few words with the boys at halftime. They have come out smoking offensively. We have yet to see, however, they're oh. wide open. Into the end zone, it is Dan Johnson, the tight end. That is touchdown pass. Number 35 for the season for Dan Marino. We mentioned at the top of the show. Tonight might well be the night that he goes into the record book as the man who has completed more touchdown pass in the season of the season than any other player. A little banana route to the outside, but look at that ball. Just as he makes his turn, that right there on stride. Man, he can throw the ball. Oh, that's fun. They didn't waste much time, did they? And Marino now one away from the record of Wyatt Tittle and George Flander. Y.A. setting his mark in 63 with the Giants. Joe Walton, the coach of the Jets, caught several of those. And, of course, George Flanda did it in 61 with Houston. On Shaman. And the Dolphin lead is extended. A little muggy here tonight. And Dan Marino, who just executed brilliantly that long drive, an 80-yard touchdown drive, gets a little oxygen. He's something different. Nissan 300ZX Turbo. You know the car. But do you know what it's like to drive it? Now you know. Once you get inside a Z, a Z will get inside of you. Come alive, come and drive. Major motion from Nissan. It's your Datsun dealer. 
there's a star in your life No one could ever deny You're on your way to the top And along the way You've always known just who you are Where you're going you've always known it Where you're going it's Michelob Where you're going it's exceptionally smooth Michelob Where you're going it's Michelob Fulton Walker of the Miami Dolphins ran for 90 yards, which was the last touchdown on a kickoff return in a Monday night football game. It was against Buffalo on October 12, 1981. That's what we've been talking about. Dan Marino now the third best. Uh, touchdown passes for a single season. Set to kick off Von Schaumann. He for Kurt Springs and Davlin Mullen. Springs 21, Mullen 20. Crowd back into it. Dolphins came out like the Dolphins. They like to think that a representative of the Dolphins scoring on their first drive. Here comes Mullen. Mullen with a good move at the 20, gets out close to the 25 yard line, and it'll be the first possession for the Jets. And Ken O'Brien will once again open the quarterback. Reminder, special night coming for you Thursday night. We'll be with the Washington Redskins at Minnesota. And then one week from tonight, we'll watch Walter Payton with the Chicago Bears go against the San Diego Chargers out in San Diego. And then, just as a thought, two weeks from tonight, we'll be up in Pontiac, Michigan. The Raiders will be there for Detroit. And we'll start telling you earlier, it's going to be an 8 o'clock Eastern time for that game. Coming up here on ABC. First down and 10 at the 25-yard line. The Jets, Freeman McNeil. And McNeil getting out to out the 29-yard line. A gain of four. It'll be second down and six. McNeil needed 18 yards opening this half to replace John Riggins as the top rusher in Jet history for a single season. He now needs 14 for that mark. Scoring drive. Started at the 20, remember, following the touchback, and then there was a pass interference penalty that carried it down inside the 10. And a face mask penalty. You see two penalties there. Didn't take them long, though, did it? And in 13 seconds. Second down and six. Freeman McNeil. Is banging out to about the 33-yard line. Short of the first down by a couple. It'll be third down and two. Well, the Jets' offense has played a super first half, and they have to be, they just have to ignore what is happening to the defense right now and get back to what they were doing in the first half, and that's controlling the ball. And unfortunately, they had one drop pass in the end zone. Of, they would still be very much in this ball game, but if they can score a touchdown on this drive, and more importantly, get the first down now to keep their defensive team off the field, they can stay in this football game. Third down and two. Cedric Minner, and Minner uh, hit hard by Mark Brown. It'll be dependent on where they mark the ball. It's going to be very close. I think he's got it. That's they it. give him the first down on the uh, yard stripe itself. He is over the 35-yard line. And the first down mark, as you can see, just inches beyond. So it's first down Jets to keep the drive alive. That is uh, good defensive play by Brzezinski in. Mark Brown that time as you look at Mark Gastineau. You know the remarkable thing, he didn't even get a chance to work out the four first four weeks of the season. And to show you what kind of an athlete he is, he was of course embroiled in a legal proceeding involving an incident in Studio 54 in New York where he was charged with misdemeanor assault, which he was convicted on a short while ago. We'll tell you more in a moment. On first down, O'Brien yeah. shoots one out to Bobby Humphrey. And that's very close to another Jet first down, right in front of William Jetson. The Gastineau tied up in those court hearings, did not have a chance to even work out with the team, nor did this man, Ken O'Brien, who was acquitted of those same charges. And Gastineau, part of his sentence is to provide 90 hours of community service in the New York area. I think it, it, it didn't bother Mark that much, but I really do think it set O'Brien back a little bit, Frank. Oh, he couldn't work at all with yeah. the team. First down in the 46-yard line for the Jets. Freeman McNeil. Hey, I like 
Like that move. Good running by McNeil as he gets into Dolphin territory near the 49-yard line in the arms of Charles Bowser. They seem to stick with that game plan that they started with, O.J. They yes, came they out are. front. When you got a back like this, you saw him get trapped in there, and he just popped. Just changed his position on the football field. It was like a cat on a hot tin roof. Just jumped outside and picked up another five yards. Unofficially, Freeman McNeil is now tied to Jeff's all-time season record for rushing. Single season. That set by John Reagan's at 1,005 yards back in 1975. He's 93 yards on the night. Second down and two. Ball inside the 46-yard line of the Dolphins. The Dolphins leading 21 to 10. O'Brien, deep drop. There he is. A lot of time. Uh -huh. O'Brien hey. gets hey. it in to Rocky Clever. And the youngster from Montana with a 15-yard pickup provides the Jets with another first down. Not taking anything away from Freeman McNeil, Frank, but you know how I'm into statistics and things like that. But the record he broke happens to be the lowest of any team in the National Football League for a team record of rushing with 1,005 yards in one season. John's been on to exceed that, of course, with the Washington Redskins, but that was the standard and still is right now. McNeil tied with John Riggins at 1,005 yards. And McNeil hit at the line of scrimmage by Brzezinski. He might have got a yard out of it. And it's sort of a historic yard if he does because that will be a new Jets record for a single season. So they give him a yard. It's second down and nine. And Freeman McNeil has unofficially broken the record. The Jets single season rushing record set by John Reagans in 75. It's interesting that you mentioned this is not that impressive of a record but if you look at uh, many of the uh, records by the Dolphins the 13 touchdowns for a season for instance uh, they're not too impressive it's a testament to the fact that the Dolphins are our team football team they play team ball and they spread it around that record of course by Mark Clayton look out boy O'Brien lets his arm but he gets it out to McNeil look McNeil with a really good move did he ever <laughs> Freeman McNeil showing you Brilliant oh, nice. running. He'll have another Jets first down. Getting close to the five-yard line. He's slow getting up. We have told you he's missed two and a half games this year already with rib cartilage damage. And he is putting on a show tonight. You'll see him do something here that the great backs are able to do when it appears as if they're going all out. They still have one other move. They can hop and change their position on the football field. You'll see it coming up right there. See how he just hopped by the guy? Looked like he was going all out and he was able to skip right by the guy and accelerate and get down to the uh, five-yard line. The showers, they predicted, are falling. They should be brief. So Freeman McNeil breaking the tackle of William Judson down close to the five-yard line. First down goal to go. Whoa. That's Cedric Minter, and Cedric Minter really pays for the heroics of Freeman McNeil as Kim Camper really popped him along with Mark Brown. There's a loss of about a yard on that play. Mark Brown, as we mentioned in the first half, replacing an injured Ernie Roan. Ernie Roan out of tonight's game with a pinch nerve in the neck. And that's McNeil. I'm sure he's a little tired, and if you're nursing those, uh, those ribs, you're normally carrying some pads that he wouldn't normally carry. Most backs, the great ones, don't wear a lot of pads. They want to they feel the defensive players reaching for him, and he's carrying a little extra weight with that protection tonight. Second down goal to go at the six-yard line. Draw play. Minter. Minter hit hard by Glenn Blackwood, but he still moves forward close to the one-yard line where it will be third down goal to go. Well done, I through the third quarter, and the Dolphins lead 21-10. Now, I don't think we have to worry too much about a decision if they don't get it on third down because when you're six and six and you're down by 11 points, I think they're pretty much you're going to go pretty much it. have to go for They're it. in a four down zone. We're saying. four down zone. Mathematically, of course, the Jets still alive, but it would take a lot of happening, perhaps even an earthquake, to get them in. They know that. Tony Page. There he is. And the rookie from Virginia Tech gets it into the end zone and. The Jets are not giving up tonight. They're playing a solid football game. They have been just totally decimated defensively in their secondary by injuries, and yet they are staying right in it with the Miami Dolphins. This see, offensive unit. See a 5'10", 230-pound Tony Page. A little lightweight Don Nottingham there. Pretty tough to, to tackle when he gets a rolling start going there. Sixth-round draft pick out of Virginia Tech. It's the touchdown for the Jets, and Leahy is on for the conversion. Leahy 
Puts it to the uprights. And the lead is once again down to four points. The Dolphins over the Jets halfway through the third quarter. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl in a moment. IBM presents You Make the Call. Hugh Green of Tampa Bay heads for the corner and crosses the goal line with his feet inside the pylon while holding the ball above the pylon. Now you make the call. Is this a touchdown? Some people think the IBM PC Junior runs only about this much software. The truth is, PC Junior runs over a thousand of the best, most up-to-date programs including powerful new cartridge programs like Lotus 123. And with PC Junior's new memory expansion attachment, it can run well over a thousand more programs. PC Junior from IBM, the computer that's growing by leaps and bounds. What call did you make? The pylon is considered out of bounds, and if the ball does not break the plane of the goal line inside the pylon, it is not a touchdown. An exciting CFA doubleheader, first at 12 Eastern, number 11 Auburn guns for a Sugar Bowl berth against Alabama. Then third-ranked Florida tackles number 12 Florida State Saturday on ABC. Tony Page, the rookie from Virginia Tech, took it in from one yard out. Big man, 5'10", 230 pounder. They drafted in the sixth round looking for a blocking skill. He just got a key touchdown to draw them to within four of the Dolphins. Play kicks away. Fulton Walker is deep. And once again, with that prevailing wind, there will be no return. We were not told that Bo Camper was injured. He obviously was hurt in the, or rather this Bob Baumauer. Bo Camper, we saw them earlier working on his shoulder, but this is Bob Baumauer. He came in tonight with a very sore knee, and now he has a wrap on his ankle. And they would really be hurt if they lose Bob Baumauer, one of the fine nose tackles in football. Pro Bowler, as you can see. We'll try and get more information for you when we return to the Orange Bowl in Miami. There's a tree down on the power line. Introducing Moore Truck for 85, the 59.99 Nissan. More payload than any other leading standard compact truck. More combined standard power and torque, too, all for the same sticker as last year. The 59.99 Nissan. Power's off. Let's go. The Moore Truck for no more money. Right now, special incentives from Nissan can help save you big money at your Datsun dealer. But hurry, offer limited. And roll. Who says you can't taste life without it making its toll? Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. No one was tough enough until Clint Eastwood escaped from Alcatraz Sunday. Injuries continue to haunt the Jets. That's center Joe Fields, an ice pack on his right knee. And uh, he really is the anchor of that offensive line for the Jets. Miami first down and 10, the ball at their own 20-yard line. Both ball clubs, first possession here in the second half, have been able to generate touchdowns. The Dolphins went 80 yards. The Jets went 75 yards. Tony Nathan on the first and 10. And Whoa. Nathan slides out close to the 25-yard line. Again, a four. It'll be second and six. And we're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations all around the nation to identify themselves. Eyewitness News follows the game here on WABC-TV New York. Back in the Orange Bowl in Miami, the Jets led off the scoring tonight with a 7 to nothing lead. Marino came right back to tie it up with seven. A touchdown shot to Mark Clayton. Pat Leahy had a Jets field goal to make it 10-7. Then the Dolphins answered with a 14-10 lead. And then they came into halftime 21-10. The Jets have came back with another touchdown, as have the Dolphins. And right now, it is 21-17. The Dolphins over the Jets. That's Mark Clayton. And Marino with a hot hand 
after the first quarter tonight. Mark Clayton has caught his 13th touchdown pass. That's a new Dolphin record already tonight. Watch Clayton here. He'll do something that he may do as well as any receiver in the game. Actually, after he catches the ball, he is so dangerous. Unlike Duper, who can run by you and catch it deep, he is a bigger threat when he catches the ball in front of you, Clayton, because he has all the moves to run by you after he has the ball. 39-yard line, first down and 10. The Dolphins. Woody Bennett, and Woody Bennett slides through a small opening, gets out over the 45 to the 46. Gain of almost seven on that. It appears second down and three. It appears that each of these offensive units have kind of figured out some of the weak spots on the defenses tonight, doesn't it? And I think that's one of the big concerns for Don Shula tonight is not his offense. He knows he can score some points, but their inability to mount a pass rush because in the playoffs, he's going to have to be able to put some pressure on the opposing quarterback. Second down. Woody Bennett again, left side. Big oh. opening. Bennett stays on his feet to the 40-yard line. Oh, 15-yard pickup. Just, Springs makes the stop. And tempers are flaring over the sidelines. I think Russell Carter just made a huge mistake. <laughs> The cooler heads are prevailing. Cleveland Green, the well, offensive tackle in their soothing ruffled feathers. As we take a look at the run, typical Miami run, all the linemen hit their men and get position on them. Big hole big there, was Position blockers, big hole over there. A actually, they got, they got Fleckle outside, and they were able to get the big run. I think Russell, as you mentioned earlier, number 27, made a big mistake because he got the best of the exchange the with Duper. Well, we didn't hear the, the call, but he got the best of the uh, exchange with Duper. He knocked him down, but after he knocked him down, he walked up and hit him. As you can see, Mullen there, he has some back problems. That's and about the, the only healthy defensive back the Jets had coming into the night, and they are working on Davlin Mullen. They lost three against the Dolphins three weeks ago. Johnny Lynn, Daryl Ray, Russ Carter. They're trying to play tonight, all three of them. They lost Bobby Jackson earlier in the season. They have been really hurt in the secondary. They get the first down at the 40-yard line. The Dolphins keep their drive alive. Marino miraculously gets that ball off to Woody Bennett. Right in front of his face was a hard-charging Joe Klecko. Nice job of reading downfield, seeing that was covered, and then immediately going just instinctively, knowing where his kind of checkoff man was that time. There was a gain of six. It'll be second down and four. And Marino is looking right into Joe Klecko. Throwing that ball, almost sidearm, off balance, was able to get it there. He does things, Don, you shouldn't be able to do. He does things that you, you just, you're right. I've, he does some things that I've never seen other people do. But particularly for a second-year guy, he shows a lot of composure. Second and four. Uh-oh. Joe Carter on a little reverse, and Carter will have another first down inside the 25. Bobby Bell, the rookie from Missouri, the son of the great... Hall of Famer Bobby Bell, who played so many great years with Kansas City in there defensively for the Jets. Marty Lyons had an opportunity to make a big play, hitting him behind the line of scrimmage, but didn't wrap his arms around it, and he was able to break loose. The rain is falling. It continues to fall, and now rather heavily in the crowd, starting to put up a lot of umbrellas, some of them even moving into the tunnels leading into the Orange Bowl. Miami averaging 8.7 yards per rush. First and ten. Reno with a lot of time, just does not have the receiver. Oh, nice. Yes. What a play. And they say got those feet down. We perhaps can see it from the reverse angle. We could not see it here because of the crowd of Dalton players. 11 yards. Look at uh, Danny saying, hey, you know what? He went out of bounds and came yeah. back in. That's yeah, I was going to say, where's Kurt Springs number 21 going? <laughs> if he catches out of bounds, it doesn't matter. So don't run out of bounds trying to cover the guy. He indeed did step out of bounds and Which should not have been allowed to come back in for the reception, but they have marked it at the 13-yard line, first down and 10 Miami. And this youngster is really something. He came up a year ago as an eighth-round draft pick out of Louisville. He only caught six balls a year ago. Coming into the night, he had caught... 46 passes, averaging just under 19 yards. He caught his 12th touchdown pass tonight. That ties Nat Moore's record from 77. He's caught five more tonight for 68 yards and that one touchdown. He's a great receiver, and he has benefited from Mark Duper's 
fast start. Mark Duper had six touchdowns in the first four games of the season. So what defenses has done, they've adjusted to him. They double team him. And in the last eight games, uh, Duper only caught one touchdown. The stadium clock on the scoreboard it's is zipping by. Just up somewhat. They're going to put some more time on it. As you can see, a play is held up for just a moment. I would imagine these two young receivers also have benefited from playing with like Matt Moore. Oh, James. He's practicing with him. Yeah, he's been around. He's been around for a good long while. He say this may be his last season. Also, same size, five foot nine. I bet he comes back. Clock set at 4:21, <laughs> remaining in the third quarter. The Dolphins leading by four over the Jets, 21-17. Tony Nathan has limped off for the Dolphins. Had that picked off. A little mix up there that time. And Bobby Mike Bell, the rookie from Missouri, wanted that desperately. Bruce Hardy went out and up. And it looked like Marino thought he was just going out. Forgot about the up. That was close. It'll bring up second down and 10. The ball at the 13 yard line. And there is a remarkable resemblance between young Bobby Bell and his Hall of Fame father. What could he play? Yeah, you bet. This He'd get your attention, there. wouldn't he? <laughs> Tony Nathan back in the game. The work the sidelines was that he has slightly bruised shins. Ninth play of this drive. It's second and ten. Marino, Hardy, Hardy's second touchdown of the night. And that does it. And that, for Marino, ties the record of Y.A. Tittle, George Blanda, 36 touchdown passes on the year. And he's doing it in the 13th game. And so they won't be able to lay that 16 game thing on you that the NFL doesn't pay any attention to anyway. He has tied the record. Blanda did it in 61. Y. Tittle in 63. Blanda with Houston. And of course, Y. Tittle with the Giants. What a talent. It's just so much fun to watch him play. He's, uh, from what I understand, too, he's a heck of a nice, nice young man. Sort of a free spirit, they say. Well, I like Happy that. Happy go lucky guy. Von Shaman. For the conversion. Offensive explosion here in the third quarter. Neither team has punted. Neither team has settled for a field goal. The Dolphins get their second 80 yard drive for a touchdown. The Jets, in their first possession, went 75 yards. See great talent, and he has great receivers. You can see Bruce Hardy just coming to the inside right there, swinging up. Got away from the linebacker, Bell, that time. And Bobby Bell, the rookie from Missouri, with a lot of potential, gives up the touchdown to Bruce Hardy. Four touchdown passes by Dan Marino on the night. You're not just another face. Miss him? I've been gone three days, but it seems like three weeks. <laughs> I know. How old is yours? Seven. Tim's three and so excited. He's coming to the airport. Well, we'll be right on time. More coffee? United carries over 100,000 travelers a day. But in the friendly skies, we never forget they're people just like us. I'm sure they're more excited than they look. <laughs> Play GTA, this is Army 212, 7 miles northwest, low fuel, heavy weather. Army 212, radar contact, turn right heading 150. With a fog bound helicopter hanging on your every word. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, only that you're Coming good. Slowly. Roger. Overlanding threshold. Be all that you can be. Thanks for your help. Roger. You can do it in the Army. Dan Marino has thrown for four touchdown passes on the night. He's 17 of 25 for 184 yards. He started very slowly tonight. He has changed all that. See if the Jets can answer. Kirk Springs is deep. Mullen is there. Von Shaman puts it up. Davlin Mullen. Traffic slowed him somewhat, and he's nailed as he moves over the 22-yard line. Only a 10-yard return. And let's take another look at another lengthy scoring drive. Following the touchback, Miami now has twice gone 80 yards to score here in the third quarter. That was a rather balanced attack, I would say. Run, throw, run, run, throw, run, throw, Hardy. throw, throw. Hardy 
with his second touchdown of the night. First down and 10. Ball just out over the 22-yard line for the Jets. Give them credit. They stayed in this game. Injury racked as they are. Let's see what they can do now. Freeman McNeil, he's having a big night. Runs into A.J. Dewey and backs Dewey up for about a five-yard pickup. Well, the Jets aren't going to panic. They're playing two tight ends. That pretty much tells the defense, we're going to run at you. You better try to stop us. And they've gotten what we call positive yardage on first down. Anything that is five yards or more is you sort of won that little battle on first down. Oh, a lot of New York Giants are watching these Jets tonight because they will get it on Sunday at the Meadowlands. And the Jets will close with Buffalo and Tampa Bay. It looked so good a few weeks ago when they were six and two, but they have lost four straight. And off is Tony Page and the big rookie from Virginia Tech moving up close to first down yardage. It's going to be a long trip for the Giants next week. They've got to go all the way across the field. They are the visiting team, aren't they? In the middle play at the Meadowlands now. Yeah. How about them Giants? Came back and won a good game yesterday. Speaking of Giants, there was a young man I played with. He's growing old right in front of our eyes. I told him before the game, I said, you used to be younger than me. <laughs> he said, I was a lot younger when the season started. I think he felt coming into this season he was going to have the opportunity to quiet his critics from last season. But unfortunately, as they just have a first down, unfortunately, with all those injuries, as they told us today, tough. out of the 49-man squad, they have 24 guys that have... They gave him a day off, and 24-49 came in for treatment. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Fields, by the way, is in the lineup for the Jets. If I fail to mention that, we saw him earlier with an ice pack on his knee, but he's back out there. And he really is the leader of that off offensive group. And as, as is Dwight Stevenson for the Dolphins, both fine centers tonight. First down at the 32-yard line. That's the time remaining in the third quarter. The Dolphins leading 28-17. Freeman McNeil, right side, and he just pulls into Bob Rudzinski. Gain of about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Uh, once again, CFA College Football coming your way 12 o'clock Eastern this Saturday from Birmingham, Alabama. And it's going to be an interesting doubleheader afternoon featuring two southern rivalries to kick it off starting live at 12 o'clock Eastern. Number 11 ranked Auburn looking for a Sugar Bowl first. Goes against intrastate rival Alabama. And at 3.30 Eastern, number three ranked Florida gets it on with number 12 ranked Florida State. You'll see it right here on ABC. On CFA College Football, keep in mind, with a victory over Alabama, Abra, Ab Auburn will go to the Sugar Bowl and meet Nebraska. Second and eight, and McNeil is piled up. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage. Whoa. Kim Camper once again. Uh, Camper really did a job. He came through there. Can't bring him back. Deborah's got him. <laughs> Deborah has put Mr. Namath on the shelf. Wonderful gal. I met her the other day. She really is bright. He's sure pretty. And Joe has sort of settled down. Sort of. Third down and eight. What he said. O'Brien. A lot of time. And good coverage on Lamb Jones. Good coverage provided by William Judson on Lamb Jones. And we'll see the first punt of this second half. Well, we can talk about the coverage. The biggest problem that I'm sure Don Shula is concerned about is he got absolutely no pass rush on, on the quarterback on this play. And he's playing against a team that has given up 18 sacks in the last four games. So I think Shula still has a lot to be concerned with. I'd say that was good coverage by Judson as Ramsey has to hurry the punt. Bolton Walker, fair catch called for at the 23-yard line in Miami will have their third possession here in the third quarter, and they have scored on the first two touchdowns. In fact, we'll be back in a moment. At Wang, we make computers that not only enhance individual performance, but work in harmony with one another and compatibly with our competitors to bring out the brilliance in all. Wang, we put people in front of computers. It took world-class technology to create a new world-class sedan, introducing the all-new Maxima GL from Nissan, a world of room, functional luxury, and performance. 
the power of a three-liter fuel-injected V6. Maxima GL, a world-class sedan that doesn't cost the world. Come alive, come and drive. Major motion from Nissan. At your Datsun dealer. Thursday, an NFL special as the Washington Redskins battle to stay in their heated divisional race when they tangle with the upset-minded Vikings. Live at 9 Eastern on ABC. Back in the Orange Bowl, a capacity crowd, game blacked out of Miami. The sellout occurred after the 72-hour ruling. But they're here, and they have been noisy. The Dolphins leading the Jets 28-17. They have a first down and 10. The ball near their 24-yard line. Woody Bennett for the Dolphins over the left side. And Woody Bennett has been running well tonight. He gets four. It'll be second and six. A reminder, coming up later tonight, a look at the artificial heart as a business venture. Should it be a profit maker for major companies? And could it mean that only the rich can afford the operation? That's tonight on Nightline, following your late local news on most of these ABC stations. And then tomorrow night, Nightline has arranged an exclusive interview with Libyan strongman Muammar Gaddafi. That'll be tomorrow night, and that, I guess, is one way to characterize him. Scary is another. Second down and five. Dolphins have not punted in the second half. Marino. One of the rare mistakes, pulling away from center Dwight Stevenson. Leaves it there, plops on it. It'll be third down and four. And a fairly errorless free game, hasn't it? Three turnovers, very few penalties. That's fun to watch. I like that kind of football. Sammy Dolphins will not get a playoff here in the third quarter as time is running out. They lead the New York Jets 28-17 and we'll be returning to the Orange Bowl for fourth quarter action after this word from our local stations. Wednesday, an international incident exposes the shocking truth about Blake. A human being is dead because of you. On Dynasty, then on Hotel, Peter's new love has the evidence to destroy a national hero. That was an accident. With special guest star Andy Griffin. Wednesday. Imagine if you couldn't advertise in the 9X Yellow Pages. You could end up talking to a lot of people who are just looking. Just looking? Just looking. Just looking. Just looking. Just looking. Fortunately, the 9X Yellow Pages gets you serious customers because four out of five people who pick it up are ready to buy. They're not just looking. 9X Yellow Pages for New York Telephone. Where would you be without it? Panasonic is about to amaze you. Watch. Amazing, isn't it? Now, whether you prefer shaving wet or dry, the Panasonic wet-dry rechargeable will make shaving close, clean, and comfortable. And now there's a wet-dry shaver for women, too. Tonight on Eyewitness News, after the Jets game, the story of a mother who thought her daughter was dead and buried, but was not. And the New Yorker raised more than $2 million in just one night. General Hospital's Laura, tomorrow, 4.30. Back in the Orange Bowl, it's seen so many memorable contests over the years, so many of them provided by the Miami Dolphins. They have a third down. The ball at the 29-yard line, third down and six. From the shotgun. Now, Marino, underneath, fires and gets it complete. Goes out to Nat Moore, the 11-year veteran, whom O.J. talked about earlier, who is really a new light because of the great play of Mark Duper and Mark Clayton, the outside receiver. Those are the stats at halftime. We will now dissolve through the third quarter. And it was an offensive show on the part of both teams, but the Dolphins getting the upper hand of it. The Jets got one touchdown, the Dolphins got a pair. No turnovers tonight through three quarters of play and very few flags. We enjoy it. 36 yard line, first down and 10 Miami. Marino with that kind of rolling pocket. And Marino ripples one. But it'll be marked incomplete. Mark, Mark Clayton came down with the ball, but he was out of bounds. And you look around this stadium and think of all those great games, it, it's a strong probability that the Dolphins in 1987 will be playing in a new stadium, being 
privately funded some 12 miles north of here 73,000 seat stadium they have 235 skyboxes planned and they've already sold a number of those so the financing is pretty well in place under the leadership of owner and president Joe Robbie here in Miami so Dolphins are committed to the season of 85 and 86 and it probably will be that they will be moving north in 1987 Second down and 10, Marino stays in the air. And Mark Clayton, intended receiver, Marino gave him an opportunity, but just over his outstretched fingertips. Let's take a look at the AFC picture. Remember, the Dolphins are 11 and one. They know with a win tonight, and a win in their final three games, the, that being the Raiders, Indianapolis, and the Cowboys, that they will be in the driver's seat as far as the home field advantage. There you can see the asterisks, they have clinched their division the other contenders now the Raiders of course still very much alive New England very much alive the Jets mathematically as I mentioned earlier they probably need an earthquake and Cincinnati and Cleveland they are also not totally eliminated but you've got the Raiders and the Cowboys are probably going to be coming in here that their hopes going to be alive so that's two pretty tough ball games talk about that NFC picture in a few moments third down and ten Dolphins from their own 35 yard line Marino looking for a big one uh, and again, Speedster Mark Clayton couldn't get there. Good coverage back there. Jets got Daryl Ray, their free safety over there to help out the cornerback. It's and interesting that uh, Clayton now is, Frank seemed to be his favorite receiver. He hasn't thrown too many passes of uh, Mark Duper's way tonight. I think they're still giving Mark Duper probably the bulk of the double coverage. Can double cover everyone. We've seen it tonight. The tight end Hardy has caught two touchdown passes. Reggie Roby and flag fly. The Jets. <laughs> I love when the players start refereeing. That's so much fun. They do it so well. Yeah. And unbiased. See his press <laughs> Illegal snap by the center. Well, they'll back them up. And he did. He just lifted the ball up to make the snap. That's Jeff Taves, the center. <laughs> I bet he thinks what in the world is going on. That's Actually, Bruce Hardy on the snap. <laughs> he really took a hammering when he lifted that ball up, didn't he? That was Fernanza Burgess, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So well, now Reggie Roby will get a chance to perform before the sellout crowd. The big second-year man out of Iowa. He loves to get a chance to freewheel on it. You said that was Fernando Burgess that hit him, took a shot at him. He's the guy, while playing for Miami, broke Jack Squirrick's jaw, jaw in the preseason to Jack Squirrick, the linebacker for the Raiders. He's done. Whoa, and Roby will thrill the crowd with that one. That went out of sight for a moment. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's putting it down there. Reggie Roby, 69-yard punt. Whoa. Six-round draft pick last year, and that was a well-spent sixth-round <laughs> pick, and tempers are flaring again. <laughs> I tell you, this Fernando Burgess is, he took a shot at somebody on that, and now the Jets are, I mean, Miami is pretty upset. Longest punt of Reggie Roby's career, and I can attest to the fact it may well be the highest. It went right up to the rim, it seemingly, of the Orange Bowl. Boom. But that, that is brilliant form, isn't it? Look at that follow through. Edgy Roby, 69 yard punt, his career best. The Jets will have the ball at the 20. There's a style in your life, no one could ever deny. You're on your way to the top, and along the way, you go. It's exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. When AT&T wrote the book on quality control, a lot of people read it. In fact, they studied it. Today, some of the most quality-conscious companies in the world use the AT&T handbook as a guide. The fact that so many companies depend on us for quality means a lot. The fact that so many people do means even more. AT&T, we're reaching out in new directions. 
an exciting CFA doubleheader. First at 12 Eastern, number 11 Auburn comes for a Sugar Bowl berth against Alabama. Then third-ranked Florida tackles number 12 Florida State Saturday on ABC. Ken O'Brien, he was a rookie, 24th round draft pick. First pick for the Jets a year ago. Marino was the 27th. It has been a rise to stardom for Marino. It's been struggling for Ken O'Brien, making his second start tonight on first and 10. Dumps it off to McNeil. And McNeil, clever running, splitting a couple defenders. He'll get the first down out over the 30-yard line. McNeil. Ken O'Brien really oh. paid for that one. He held it a long time, and Bill Barnett unloaded on him. Big Mark. Marvin Powell limping there. Big Marv stayed down a little bit. We got a lot of pride with this offensive unit, especially up front. Jim Ringle has a habit of doing that with his offensive line. He was in Buffalo, as I mentioned early, earlier when I was there, and then he went to New England, did an excellent job with that offensive line, and I think he's developed a lot of pride with these guys because they, they don't want to leave the football field. The first and 10 for the Jets right at the 30-yard line. They trail 28-17. We're in the fourth quarter, early moments. Prima McNeil. And McNeil out of bounds near the 34-yard line. A gain of three, perhaps four. It'll be second down and six. William Judson was there defensively. Skinny wide receivers <laughs> have a difficult time when the traffic comes their way. Working against Charles Bowser, Lamb Jones is persistent. So is Bowser. Unfortunately, Bowser is 235, and old Lamb is only 180 pounds. That's a mix. Mixed match. Second down, long six. They marked it just inside the 34. Freeman McNeil single setback. McNeil works to the left. Gets oh. away from Bo Camper. And gets a yard out of it. It'll bring up third down and five for young Ken O'Brien. I know Joe Walton's strategy is to control the ball and to run the football, but he's down by, what is it now, 11 points. And his offensive line has been doing a super job of protecting Kim O'Brien. I'm a little surprised that he's running the ball so much at this point. You weren't with us earlier. Freeman McNeil is broken. The Jets single season rushing mark set by Riggins in 1975. Going over 1,005 yards with a 100-yard effort tonight. Third down, five Jets. O'Brien will go down inside the 20-yard line. Kim Bocamper there. He had help from his friends. Bowser was there, 56, and A.J. Douay. Well, Randall Tom Thomas made that happen. He's a linebacker for Miami. He stayed with Minter, who was running a, I guess it was going to be a little quick screen out here. He came out with an offensive guard, and Randall Thompson came out with them, and uh, Ken O'Brien had nowhere to go. 16-yard loss, and Chuck Ramsey will kick against that stiff breeze. Fulton Walker is at his own 40-yard line. The Dolphins should get it back in good shape. Ramsey not having a good year. Next to last in the AFC, statistically. This time he hits a good one. Turns it over against the win. Golden Walker has to make the fair catch at the 35-yard line. Ramsey getting just about as much as he could get out of that one. But the Dolphins, nevertheless, will begin at their own 36. 45-yard punt by Ramsey. Introducing the first affordable 4x4 built tough enough to be major motion, the 1985 Nissan Standard. Nissan's lowest sticker-priced 4x4, with more combined power and torque than any other leading standard compact truck. Nissan 85, the new standard of 4x4s. Only the price isn't tough. Right now, special incentives from Nissan can help save you big money at your Datsun dealer, but hurry, offer limited. What keeps America going when it's 20 below? Presto. What gets families moving when the weather says no? Presto. Why does your car need a fresh fill of Presto? A radiator could look this bad after just 10,000 miles of driving on weak, neglected antifreeze, while a Presto radiator looks this good. That's the Presto difference. What gets them to the ski slopes? The brand that stands alone. America goes with Presto. Eleven forty-five remaining in the game from the Orange Bowl in Miami before a capacity crowd. The Dolphins leading the Jets 28-17. And Dan Marino having a brilliant night. 
First down and ten. That is a ladder pass. Another pass. Clayton looking to pass. Oh. <laughs> Cooper is down there deep and is picked off by Davlin Mullen. Mullen's bringing it back. It's the first turnover of the night. And Mullen is run down by the tight end, Dan Johnson, but he gets it back to the 35-yard line. <laughs> I think Mark, yeah, it was a good throw, but I think his primary receiver was Dan Johnson. Dan was covered, then he looked across the field and saw Duper. If he would if he would have seen him a little sooner, I think he could have gotten the ball to him because Duper beat his man early. As you can see he's scrambling around, he throws it out there, and Duper literally has his man beat, beaten, but a great defensive play uh, by Mullen. The purest coach that he is, Don Shula, will always give you a little wrinkle. And he always has a little something going a reverse he'll have the wide receiver as we had just seen throwing the ball he'll bring in Jensen as a flanker and let him throw the ball on occasion this time the Jets however get the first turnover the night first and ten at the 35 yard line Freeman McNeil hit by A.J. Dewey he'll get a couple it'll be second down and eight they've been picking on Devlin Mullen earlier he had cramps a little bit he, he appeared to have some back problems they were working him out over there and he really for a guy who's beaten He's really done a super job of getting up there and catching the ball. Good heads up play, too, because he gets up. Duper didn't touch him, so he made a nice return after he intercepted the ball. Second down and eight, the Jets. They're down by 11 points. Freeman McNeil. Freeman McNeil playing with very sore ribs. He did not even work out this week until Friday. Short of the first down by a couple. It'll be third down and two. Watching him run tonight, you just have to almost marvel at another running back in this league, Eric Dickerson, now with 1,632 yards, 191 yards yesterday. He needs 371 yards to match O.J.'s record of 2003, set in 73. He needs to average 124 yards a game, does Eric Dickerson. He's been averaging 125 through the first 12. And the way he's running recently, he may break it next week. <laughs> Third and short, O'Brien. And well covered out of the back field, backfield, Cedric Minter was picked up by William Judson, who's played a fine football game tonight at the corner for the Dolphins. It's too bad the Jets, it appears as if their receivers don't run many option passes, because you had Rocky Cleaver going down the middle of the field. He had one-on-one -on -one co coverage, and if he would have gone to his left or his right, right, he would have been wide open, but I guess they coach these guys that go with a pattern and stay with it, and he was covered. Chuck Ramsey to find a flag is down. It's off the foot of Ramsey. And I mean, that got about over the line of scrimmage before it took <laughs> off the foot. And there's a yes. asshole breaking out once again. That's going to be Fernando oh, again. Yeah, Burgess, he's a hitter. Now, as I said, he broke Jack Squire's jaw in the preseason. He cracked back on him as we wait to hear the call. He was a quarterback. You know, he's a rookie. He was with Miami then. He was a quarterback at Morris Brown. Tough guy. Oh, Aggressive boy. quarterback. Flag was down at the line of scrimmage. Referee Fred Wyatt sorting it out. Preliminary indication against the Jets. So unlikely to see a pro punter miss one that badly in weather that's, that's this good. And the personal foul. They had an offside and a personal foul indicated. I think the personal foul came later. It'll only be a 14-yard pickup on that punt if it stands. And the options are being provided to Miami. And Shula's on the rules committee, and you can see him coaching the officials a little bit there on the sideline. <laughs> That's right, Don. <laughs> he said, it's our ball right here. We want a first down. I think what happened, we had an offside penalty against the Jets, and there was a personal foul that occurred after the play was over. And that's what it appeared to be. The confrontation broke out after the ball had gone out of bounds, and the ball has been marked by the official at the 45-yard line. Here is Fred Wyatt, who yeah, I know is going to sort this out sooner or later. <laughs> it be nice, Fred. And he's getting a lot of help from his would-be friends, off-season friends. Been Options now, once again, being provided to the defensive captain on the field. That 
an offensive captain right there, Dwight Stevenson. He says, we want the ball at the 45. So here is Fred Wyan's call. Offside, offense, number 46, personal foul, offense, number 46 <laughs> for the kick. Both refused, first down. The good man, man. Burgess, he covered all bases. <laughs> he was offside, he got the personal foul. The kick was off the foot of Ramsey. 13-yard pickup. The Dolphins have it back at their own 44-yard line. 10-01 remaining in the game. I think he was offside, Frank, because he wanted to get to somebody. <laughs> he got down there. Yeah, he used to play with these guys and get cut by a team, and you're that aggressive. Well, yeah, maybe a few yeah. guys he, don't, he doesn't like. Still has no place in the game, quite frankly. It doesn't help. Obviously hurts. It will always be there, though. As long as they're hitting each other, somebody's going to get mad. On first and ten, Woody Bennett. Woody Bennett having a good night. He's kind of in the shadow, really, of <laughs> the outside receivers and Dan Marino. And there is Burgess. He better keep that helmet on even when he's on the sideline. Hey, well, you know what? He was a quarterback, and they're not letting him play quarterback. He's a rookie. He's a free agent. The only way he's going to make the team is to be aggressive, and uh, he he's certainly being aggressive. They were saying earlier today he volunteered to play linebacker for the Jets. When he first got up there, he had a couple of them hurt. He's not going to play. Woody Bennett has quietly reeled off 75 yards rushing for the Dolphins tonight. Second down and seven. Marino, Nathan. Boom, Nathan hit right at midfield. He gets a couple of yards out of it. It'll be third down and five. And reminder, ABC's Wide World of Sports, Saturday, December the 8th at 5 o'clock Eastern Time from New York City, International Professional Figure Skating Championships from Madison Square Garden. ABC's Wide World of Sports returns December the 8th with the International Professional Figure Skating Championships from the Garden. Wide World of Sports will be seen at 5 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, so don't miss it. The return of Wide World of Sports, that's a week from Saturday, December the 8th. Third down and five, the ball resting right at midfield. 8.45 and the clock is moving here in the Orange Bowl. As the Dolphins moving closer to a 12 and one season mark. Marino trying to get it into Joe Rose, incomplete. And Lance Mell, one of the fine pass defenders at linebacker in the league was right there with Dan Rose. He really Joe was. Rose does it. Good job by Lance Mell. He's a fine football player. Remember the playoff game against the Raiders a couple of years oh, ago? Yeah. yeah. A couple of interceptions late in the game that saved the victory for the Jets. Led this team in tackles the last three years, and he's leading the team in tackles this year. Second with sacks for the Jets. It's funny. He has 123 tackles, and he leads this team. And on the other side of the line, you're looking at the leader of the Dolphins at only 55, and that's Bob Brzezinski. Here's, here's Reggie Roby again. That high drop hangs it up there, looking for the coverage. Springs has to make the fair catch call. That ball hung up there. I don't know how long, but it was extraordinary. So the Jets are in the hole again. They'll start at their 10-yard line. Only a 40-yard effort, but it really paid off. Some make greatness look simple. Like the great Gretzky and Canon's new vision of photography, the inspiring T-70. With the pure agility, the complete versatility of touch button control and three distinct program modes. Now, Canon makes it simple to handle any shot. The inspiring Canon T-70. It makes the great shot simple. It ain't easy to do rope tricks first time around. Same goes for smokeless tobacco. But here's one that's easier to use. Skull Long Cut. Now, it's not chewing tobacco. Long Cut means that it packs easy. Stays put between your cheek and gum. So Skull Long Cut makes it easy to enjoy tobacco without lighting up. Plus, it's got the great taste that can only come from Skull. Easy to use, great taste. Try Skull Long Cut. <laughs> it's a lot easier than this. The New York Jets have battled the Miami Dolphins. Injury racked as they are, they've stayed close. They trail now 28-17. They're running out of time with 8.21 remaining. They have a first and 10. The ball just over their 10-yard line. Freeman McNeil Ooh. tries to get it outside, and he is taken there by Bob Brzezinski, one of the tough linebackers against the run. And we mentioned that NFC playoff picture. Probably the simple way to put it is 
any one of those eight and five teams that can win their next three games is going to be guaranteed a playoff spot. So that's really what they have to be thinking about. As I mentioned earlier, the Giants next week will host these New York Jets. Let's take a look at the other contenders. The Rams, of course, certainly still alive. Along with the great play of Eric Dickerson, as is St. Louis, New Orleans, Philadelphia, and Green Bay mathematically. Second down and nine. The ball just inside the 12-yard line of the Jets. Mickey Schuler. And Schuler short of the first down. Crawls up close to the 18-yard line in the arms of Glenn Blackwood. Well, the Jets earlier in the game had a lot of success throwing the ball, you know, 10 to 15 yards downfield. And in the last two drives, they have appeared to get somewhat conservative. I think their game plan worked in the fact that they were able to stay in the football game by playing that ball control type offense. But I would have, uh, I felt that with 10 minutes ago, at least the last time they had the ball, they should have opened up a little bit. Third down and three. Cedric Minter. He is a setback behind O'Brien. Well, they need a first down here. O'Brien has all the time he could ask for, and he gets it complete out over to Glenn Dennison, the rookie from Miami, who played his collegiate ball right here, and he gets a Jets first down on a 20-yard pickup. And it's kind of funny. There's A.J. Dewey, who <laughs> was right a step behind him, but was about one step behind him is where he was. Couldn't quite catch up. Mentioned earlier that this youngster had a brilliant career performing here in Miami for the national champions a year ago. He set a record for receptions tied in receptions of 54 and the Jets are very high on his future 38 yard line is the first down for the Jets Freeman McNeil now is 115 yards on the night O'Brien uh, fires one in there to Lamb Jones who I think was going to run with it before he had it tucked away well the results another drop ball Mentioned the problems in the secondary of the Jets. They're without Wesley Walker tonight. A quad muscle in his leg. We heard a lot about that quad muscle this morning, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> the Jets have so many players with quad muscles. We finally asked pulls. him about Derek Gaffney at the end of a little get-together with him this morning, and they were almost embarrassed to tell us why he went on IR with a quad muscle. <laughs> Look out. Second and ten. Bowser. Is all over O'Brien, forcing the Aaron Pro. Pressure on the youngster, making his second start as a Jet. Did not throw a pass in the first seven games of the season. Had that remarkable career at the University of California, Davis. Passing for nearly 3,000 yards out there as a senior. 23 touchdowns, only eight interceptions. But as Don mentioned earlier, he was a surprise. First round pick. A year ago with the Jets, who overlooked Dan Marino. They took this youngster, O'Brien, the 24th player in the draft, and left Dan Marino for Miami. They took him in the 27th pick. Third and 10. Cedric Minner will be short of the first down by about a yard, and one would suspect the Jets, with 5.50 in the clock moving, will go on fourth and one. Yeah, I don't think there's much to discuss here when you're playing against, you're down by 11 points and you're playing against a Dan Marino. And it's 5 minutes, 38 seconds to go in the football game. And you're 6-6 six and six for the season. Easy call. The short yardage folks come in for the Miami Dolphin. And if you're 6-6 six, six in the season, what would be terribly wrong with a little play action and trying to put some points on the board? Well, if they don't make it, they might kind of uh, mm, loosen up the old oh, boy. boy. Tony Page, and Tony Page will have the first down. He's up near the 49-yard line. He had to get just over the 48. Good effort on Page's part that time. He got that last little uh. Well, he saw the first down mark, and he hopped right in there. Paid for it. Got tagged. He said, no, no price for a real player. I'm a team man. I was too, but I would say give it to Bubby. Bubby Braxton. was. <laughs> yeah, give it to Big Braxton. <laughs> 49 yard line, first down the Jets. You're just trying to pass it around. Yeah. Let Bubby get some glory here. <laughs> Third and one, fourth and one. O'Brien with that little moving pocket roll. 
Fires a shot in there, and it's complete to Rocky Cleaver. Now, that's nice hands there. Got to come back from it for the ball. Second year man out of Montana. Ninth round draft pick in 82. Rocky Cleaver. And he's close to the first down. Think he could be short. Think he could be related to Wally and the Beaver? He could. Distant relative. He probably knows them. Clock continuing to tick down on the Jets. They trail by 11 points, 28-17. We're inside four minutes. Second and short. O'Brien. Oh, tries to get the screen to Tony Page, and the rookie from Virginia Tech was thinking run before catch. I can't do everything. I got you a first seat. 